Hello everyone, welcome to Geek Space TV. It is wonderful to have you here, and welcome to the premiere of Night Witches Toil and Trouble, a game by Jason Morningstar of Bully Pulpit Games, and I am happy to see you all here this evening. Welcome in. Uh, I want to say this is the Geek Space TV, which is a nonprofit streaming studio out of based out of Seattle, Washington, which has as its mission diversity and representation in geek spaces. And they do a wonderful thing, and there are many ways in which you can support us. Uh, so you can support us first off, and most importantly, by being here, by watching the show. You can, I think, down probably down that way, you can uh, hit share, you can tweet about us, you can tell your friends, uh, you can, uh, I don't know, send out like Skywriters to let everybody know about the show. Uh, so let us everybody know, come and be here, be with us, uh, chat with us. Uh, you can also support us monetarily by donating. Uh, there's a little donation bar which should be up that way. And, um, you know, so if you give us a donation, we will read them out at the break and at the end. You can also subscribe. Uh, you can subscribe with Amazon Prime for free. You can also join our Patreon and be one of our Patreons. Uh, you, we also have a Discord. You can join us at our Discord where it is... Um, 
you know, surprising and wonderful. Uh, so all, that is all of us. That is what we do here on the Geek Space. Uh, let me see. Other things I want to talk about is that uh, we have uh, a wonderful, wonderful uh, cast of characters who are going to be joining us in our, in our, I'm looking at chat at the moment, forgive me. Uh, we have a wonderful <laughs> cast of characters that will be joining us for our game. Uh, I would like each one of them to introduce themselves and tell us a little bit about who they are and uh, what they do and where we can find them. Do you care who goes first? Um, Mac, why don't you go first? Oh, cool. Put me on the spot. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hi, everybody. Uh, I am Mac Beauvais, also known uh, in most circles as Strange Like That. Uh, I actually, my day job is working in product for Crypt TV, which is kind of cool. So I'm uh, very into horror. I'm very excited about this game. And I'm playing Nikita Nick Volkov, who is a sergeant and I'm really excited. I don't really know what else to say. <laughs> uh, Fox, how about you? Hey, everybody. I am Fox Smith, and I am a lady of many hats. I am an illustrator, a performer. I, um, oh gosh, I help run a nonprofit uh, with a mission to empower women to embrace their inner nerd. So I am super excited about this as well. And for anyone who wants to see anything about me, if you look at Rocket Fox anywhere, I'm likely to be there. And I am playing Titania Petrov, which is, she's the junior lieutenant and she is going to lead these women into success. And Shell Game. Hi, I'm Shell Game. Um, you've probably seen me on a couple of other shows. I am based here in the Seattle area. And in addition to working on the Geek Space shows like Worlds Beyond, I also do improv at a couple of local theaters. Oh, and I'm playing Yelena Dozmanova. Thank you very much, everyone. Uh, we have a little bit of uh, choppy frame rate at the moment that we need to take care of. If you don't mind, we're going to go down for one second so that I can uh, change the settings and we'll come right back up. We'll be back in about 10 seconds. One moment. <laughs> I think I think we are live. I think we are live. It looks to like I hope we're not dropping frames. We should be good. Uh, are it's still choppy? Imp says it's still choppy. It does look that way. Welcome back, everyone. Um, how are you all doing? I'm hoping that it looks better from where we are before. All right. So let's uh, let's see how we go. So first I want to tell you all about this game. This is Night Witches, which is a game by Jason Morningstar of Bully Pulpit Games. And it is a game about real women. In World War II, the 588th was an all-women's regiment of fighter pilots. And they went for 1,000 nights of combat, flying every night to bomb uh, Nazis in really bad airplanes. Or this is World War II and they were in basically World War I airplanes. And this is a game about these women. It's a, an episodic game, it's a slice of life game, and it's a game that, according to Jason Morningstar himself, bends towards tragedy and melancholy, but I hope we can show uh, the bravery and the sisterhood of these women who did amazing things at a time when they had to face uh, Hitler on one side, but then Stalinist politics on the other, sexism, homophobia, and they were able to rise to great occasions to do amazing things. Um, so one of the things is that I will note about this game is that we have all decided to use a number of safety measures uh, to make sure that we're all having a good and comfortable game and we're having a good time with each other. Uh, one of the things that we, we did is we did lines and veils where we talked about before the game started the things that we didn't want in the game, the things that were okay to have, the things that were things we wanted to have. So we did this to make sure we have a good gaming experience with each other. We're also using something called red card, a yellow card, which is an adaptation that I made of the X card. So if you know the X card, this is like our red card. So if there is something that happens in the game that people say, nope, cannot have it, 
uh, they're going to throw the red card. We have a macro for that. Uh, it's sort of, so, for example, if, I, if they went to put on their boots in the morning and I said, oh, there's an infestation of spiders in those boots, and someone was like, nope, cannot have spiders, they can just X card that and I will roll that back, and it will not be spiders. There'll be ants in their boots instead. Something so that people <laughs> don't have a bad fun time. <laughs> we also have the yellow card. So if you think about uh, soccer or football, if you're European, uh, the yellow card is when the scene is okay, but we're getting to like a bit of a warning zone, like right? where it is right now is okay, but we don't want to escalate. So maybe there's an argument between two of the players and they're having a good time right now, but they're like, okay, but I don't want it to get more intense. So someone can just throw the yellow card and we know that we stay at that level and we don't, we don't get more graphic or more intense. So that's a way you just throw that when you're like, I, I like where we're at, but let's not, let's not get any more intense. So those are our two safety measures and let's start the game. I would like to start the game, as I'd like to start every session, with a quote from one of the actual women who were night witches. So this one is a quote from Lieutenant Polina Gelman, who was a navigator and she was awarded the hero of the Soviet Union. And she wrote about her time, she says, On the day the war started, I was about to take my exams for my third year courses. It was a Sunday, and we heard the war had started. All the professors and students gathered at the university. We were patriotic and wanted to do something, to enlist or, or whatever. When we women apply to join the army along with the men, we were not accepted because the army would not draft women. We protested that we were brought up to believe that women were equal to men and that we thought that we should be allowed to go in the army too. That summer, all we could do was dig trenches around Moscow and put out fires started by the fascist bombs on the roofs of buildings. In October 1941, we learned that three women's air regiments were to be formed and trained with Marina Raskova, hero of the Soviet Union, as the commander. By this time, there were many experienced women pilots in the USSR, but few women trained as navigators and mechanics. The women they wished to train in those fields were those who had completed at least a few years in the universities, glider schools, or parachuting or aviation technical schools. So that is our opening quote for this session. So, it is 1941, it is cold, it is winter, and you women have been accepted into one of these three flying regiments founded by the great Marina Raskova. Out of all of the Soviet Union, only 500 women were accepted to be in one of these three regiments, and only 300 of them as pilots or navigators, the rest in mechanics and support in various ways. To get in was very difficult. You had to have more flying hours than men did to become pilots in the Soviet Air Force. You had to have 500 versus uh, a lower number for the men. And you three were accepted. And on this cold, cold winter day, you make your way to Saratov, which is this city, a city under siege. The war is not going well at this point in time. The Russians, uh, the Germans, drove all the way through Russia right up to Moscow, only 50 miles away from Moscow, and a huge swath of the Soviet Union is now occupied uh, with Nazis killing people left and right and, pe and refugees leaving their homes and people running out of food. Leningrad is under siege and people are, are resorting to eating paper. It is a desperate, desperate time for the Soviet Union and patriotic women and men all across uh, the country have signed up to try to defend the land that they love. And at this moment, you are by the mighty Volga River waiting to get on a ferry. And this ferry is huge. And on this ferry, there are about a hundred people in some trucks, all beginning to start their career as air, as air women, air men in the Soviet Union Air Force to try to do something to save their homeland. And on this ferry that you're all standing with your travel voucher in your hand, uh, you see clumps of people, most of them in civilian clothes, uh, many women, more, more women than men, looking hopeful, nervous perhaps. It's a little unclear what your life will be like when you get into training. And there are a couple of trucks here and there on this ferry and a couple of people in uniform of what, as well. But it's bracing. It's cold. You know that. You know how it's so cold that you can sort of smell the cold in your nose? It's got that particular sort of uh, feeling to it. 
And I want to ask each one of you, what are you wearing? What do you look like? And what are you carrying with you? You have some people that are carrying, you know, just one small bag. Uh, you have some people who are carrying a larger duffel bag. This is all of the things you're gonna take with you uh, in your training. So what do each one of you look like? And what are you carrying? Let's start backwards first. Let's start with uh, Shell Game. Uh, so Yelena, who goes by Lena to her friends, is she doesn't really have a whole lot. She's got a little rucksack, but honestly, it's just got like some undergarments uh, and and like uh, like a, a journal type thing. It's not really a journal. It's just a couple of pieces of paper that she sort of like sewed together. Mm -hmm. um, She's a really like small, mousy kind of kid who's got, who's like rumpled all the time. You could have just neatly pressed everything that she's wearing and she could put it on and it would just look rumpled. Like that is how she is. Fox. Well, um, Tatanya has again, a small bag only with the necessities. Um, but among those things is a fairly nice uh, leather-bound sketchbook um, and a few pastels. And that's really the only thing that is not absolutely necessary. Uh, and she is wearing a decent warmer coat. Um, she is a little bit sharper, sharper angled, um, but very well pressed. Mac. Uh, Nick is, uh, she's kind of lanky and rakish looking. She's got short auburn hair and she's heavily freckled. Um, definitely wearing, uh, she's already wearing men's clothes because she wanted to be practical for the trip. So she is wearing pants and boots, which is probably causing some funny looks. She was always a bit of a tomboy as it was. Uh, her family didn't want her to go, so her rucksack is just, again, like the others, the essentials. It's whatever she needed to get out quickly because she was eager to join the fight and to help fight on behalf of Russia, on behalf of her family. Um, she does have a small pocket knife that was given to her by her brother, Mikhail, and uh, that's really the only memento that she brought with her. What kind of shoes are the other two of you wearing? They're, they're nice. Uh, they're flat. They're not too fancy or anything. They're practical, uh, but they are nice. Mm -hmm. They're really heavy, like, farm work boots that definitely have mud and probably, like, some grass just sort of stuck to them. But not green grass. It's, like, <laughs> dead grass. <laughs> so as you're on this ferry you notice two women and unlike everyone else they're in uniform uh, they are leaning up against the rail of this ferry and they're standing pretty close to each other close enough that you think they must be friends and they're talking to each other you can't hear what they're saying but they're laughing a little bit like they're sharing some kind of story and you can tell I mean, they've got these, uh, they've got their uniforms, they've got these beautiful sort of blue piping, so you know that they're in the Air Force, and you don't know what their rank is because you haven't learned that yet, but they look sharp, and you have these two women who are sort of contrasts. Uh, there's one uh, who's got this sort of easy laugh, and she's got an open face, and she, she's smiling, and she, uh, you know, sort of looking up as if things are, are happy, and you have this other woman who has got this very stern look on her face, and her lips are pressed and she's always sort of like frowning a little bit. I mean, she gets this little bit of a smile on the edge of her lips when the other woman says something, says something amusing. Uh, but they're having this private conversation. And then out of nowhere, um, you hear a bit of a, like a, oh, we're getting, we're getting there. And you see these, these, uh, these two men. And they're also in uniform, but they don't have any boards or anything special about them. And they also seem to be drunk at nine in the morning. Um, and they start pushing forward to see right, the other side as you're approaching the, the banks. And they, and one of them puts his hand on the woman who's a bit sterner, and he pushes her so that he can see. And she just turns around and punches him in the face, and he down he goes like a sack of potatoes. And she yells at him, she says, what's wrong with you, private? 
What is wrong with you? Do you not know who I am? You meet, you must respect your officers. Get him out of here. And his friend like grabs him and like kind of pulls him away. And then she sees you looking and she looks at you and she just, like there's like, because everyone's looking and she looks at you civilians. She goes, what are you looking at? Are you uh, in the Air Force? Yes. I mean, are, are, um, hi. And her friend is like, her friend just like kind of like steps forward a little bit and she goes, hello, um, I assume that all of you are uh, new recruits? <laughs> yes. Yes. Good, good. We need good new recruits. The Soviet Union, the motherland, is in need of people. Ah, forgive me for not introducing myself. Uh, I am Senior Lieutenant Katya Derskaya, and I am the Logistics and Training Officer for the 586th All Women's Fighter Regiment. This is going to be a place where we have the best pilots in the newest fighter planes going to take down the Nazis, one by one. I hope that you will all be in my regiment, perhaps? With any luck, uh, that was very impressive. Well, uh, my friend is the one who punched him out. She can be a little, well, she can be a little rash. Awesome. The other woman who, who did the punching, who's got her arms crossed, she says, hm, awesome perhaps. I'm Senior Lieutenant Masha Rudina. I'm the training officer for the 588th. I hope you three, well, I don't know what unit you will be in, but if you're in mine, you should know that I don't take any nonsense. Understood. Good. <laughs> How old are you three? You, that small is... one. Uh, but um, I'm um, I'm uh, eighteen. Hmm. You. Over there with the stylish shoes. How old are you? I'm 20. Hmm. And you? Also 20. Young, young ones. I'm 25. I don't know. Well, if you're lucky, you'll be in my unit. We need the best pilots. Where did you train? Where did you learn to fly? You, 18 year old, where did you learn to fly? Uh, well, I, uh, I, um, Lena is completely just like in awe and, 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 uh, she, she seems to have lost her words, but when she finally finds them, she's like, I, I um, I went to the agricultural school every day as often as I could, every time I possibly could. Agricultural school. Hmm. Pilots who go to the agricultural school are usually well-trained in all sorts of environments. Salt I, of the I earth. I flew in all weather. Sorry. It's all right. Salt of the earth. Mm, what about you? Stylish one. And university. Hmm. I see. Glider school? Yes, eventually. There's good training at, at glider schools. What about you? Uh, the Vizama uh, glider school. Hmm. All right. Well... If you're decent, you may be in my unit, but do not expect any favors. Do not expect a nice time. In my unit, you work hard or you die. Duly and, noted. And her friend is like, training will be fine. Whichever unit you're in, the 586, the 587th, or the 588, you will get good training, you will get good food, and you will have comradeship. And she like sort of like hits her friend a little bit like, like these are new people. And they sort of turn and then there's like a big holler as, as the ferry hits the banks on the other side of the Volga. And the woman, Masha, she turns to you all and says, well, we in uniform will be taking a truck to the base, the Engels Aerodrome, you all will be walking. It's four kilometers. I hope you have good shoes on. And she walks off with her friend and they get into one of these trucks waiting. You can see these soldiers 
moving on to these trucks as they start moving off. And there's this gaggle of civilians. There's one road to take. And you're all there expected to make this long walk towards your new home. Well, um, hi, I'm Lena. Oh, you probably already know that. Um, it's nice to meet you again. <laughs> Pleasure. I'm Titania. Nice to meet you too, Titania. And uh, I'm Nikita. Hi. Nice to meet you too, Nikita. And then somebody says, excuse me. And there is this woman. She looks younger than Lena. She, but she's got, she's got a little bit of makeup on to make her look a little bit older, perhaps. And uh, she's got really long hair that's coiffed very nicely in a very stylish hat. And uh, her clothes look very, they look expensive, but they also look too big for her. Like maybe they're not hers, like maybe they came from someone else. And she has beside her two really large, very heavy looking bits of luggage. Like one is a trunk and one is like a valise and they look heavy, they look big and she does not look like she can carry them by herself. Um, and she turns to you all, she says, hi, I was just hoping that maybe you could help me. I can't carry, and she's also wearing heels. Um, they're not super high heels, but they look a little bit impractical for what seems to be a kind of a muddy road. And she says, um, I can't carry all of this. And I was just wondering if maybe you don't, you, you don't look like you're carrying much at all. So maybe you could help me carry my luggage. Sure, we could help you downsize it because you're not going to need all of that. Oh, but I will. I've got so many wonderful dresses in here. You, you'll help me, won't you? I don't... What's your name? Anastasia Shermetova. I'm, I'm going to be a junior lieutenant. Oh, good. Well, I, I don't think, uh, especially as a junior lieutenant, you're going to need so many dresses. Oh, but they're so lovely. I brought them myself and, I shouldn't say, but I also brought a little Victrola with some, with some records. Oof. Oh! Whoa! I'm from Moscow. Oh. I'm not. Oh. Well, are, I hope you're from a big city. Then she looks at your boots. Maybe not. So could you help me carry this? Please? And she bats her eyelashes at you as if that will convince you that you should carry her luggage. Um. Uh. <laughs> Sorry, I don't think so. Mm, best I can do is help you maybe get rid of the excess. Oh, oh, oh but... Tanya starts walking away. Um, Lena, like, picks up one side of it and then goes and, like, picks up her, like, one little bag thing that just sort of fits on one shoulder. And she's like... <laughs> and, like, Anastasia tries, but she can't carry half of a steam trunk and also this valise. She's like, someone... Could maybe someone carry this for it? We'll see you at the base. And then she puts her bag down and she goes, one moment. And she walks up to one of the soldiers near one of the trucks and she says something to him. And he like, you can tell, you can't hear their conversation, but he sort of dismisses her at first. And then she leans and she says something to him and he gets this sort of look on his face. And, he, and then he just sort of nods and he nods to some other sort of uh, other people who are in uniform, uh, some men and some women, and they just pick up her, her steamer trunk and her release and they put it in the truck. And then she just gets in the truck and she says, well, I'll see you on base. And then she gets in this truck that drives off towards the base with her heavy luggage. Well, that was something. Yeah, yeah something. Uh, well, she's rich in something. We need to make get a move on. Yes, let's start. Can, can I um, walk with you? Uh, of course. Is this your first time away from home? Well, I mean, if you don't count going to the agricultural school. Papa didn't really want me to go, so, you know, <laughs> sometimes you just do it anyway and then um, deal with the consequences later. I understand that. My parents did not want me to go either. Really? You're doing the right thing for Mother Russia. 
I couldn't not. My brother is already out there anyway. I can't just sit on the sidelines. Not now. Well, we've always been taught that women are all equal to men, so it only makes sense that we are being finally allowed what we're due. I agree completely, especially considering the fact that, well, we acquired skills. I mean, it took a significant amount of time. More than it took the men. As you're walking, it's a, it's a long walk. Uh, luckily, all of you have somewhat practical shoes, so it's not miserable. And you don't have a lot of uh, worldly goods, so you're not weighed down. And as you walk with this stream of people, you make it to this front gate. And there's a, a guard there waiting. And you can see this sort of line of people. And with each one, he addresses each one. He says, what's your name? And they give a name. And he goes, huh? You're assigned, and he gives them an assignment, one of these sort of places that they're assigned. And you hear these numbers of regiments, the 217, the 218, the 586, 587, 588, all these different units. And he gives them instructions about where they should go. And um, as they get to you, the first one in line, which one of you three is the first one in line? Hmm, OK. Um, yeah. Tatiana Petrov. He looks at you, and he goes, name? Tatiana Petrov. Petrov. And he looks at this huge clipboard. Petrov, you've been assigned to the 586 Night Bomber Regiment. Go in the gate, turn right. You go down the far, far, far end. You'll pass the 586, the 587. The 588 is the last one. Don't turn left. That's where the men's regiments are. You're supposed to go all the way down. You're going to find the logistics area. Six, report to Sergeant Sophia Yu, who's your quartermaster. Master. When you are there, you are to ask for a uniform, boots, rations, and directions to where to go next. Do you have that? Wonderful. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Next. What is your name? Uh, Nikita Volkov. Nikita Volkov. Another one for the 588, I see. All right. Turn right, don't turn left. That's where the men go. You're going to the right, all the way to the end, past the other two regiments, logistics area. Ask for Sophia Yu. Ask for your uniform, your rations, your boots, and further instructions. You got that? Understood. All right. Who's next? Yelena uh, Dozmanova. I like to go by Elena. Gives you a look. Hmm. All right. You are in the 586, nope, not 586, you're in the 588th. All the way down to the right at the end, logistics area six. Sophia Yu, ask for a uniform, boots, rations, and more instructions. You got that? All right, good. Carry on. Next. And as you're walking, let me pull over this screen here. As you're walking down the base, it's a huge, huge base, and there are all these people. And as you're walking through each of these regimental areas, you're passing by, you see all of these amazing planes. And as you pass by the 586th, you see these fighter planes. They're these amazing, sleek, brand new fighter planes with like this, like they're so cool, and they're for one person, and you know that the women who are gonna go into those fighter planes are gonna go and like do dog fights with Nazis and shoot down people and become great uh, ace pilots. And you pass by the 586 area and all of those wonderful planes, and you move into the area, once you start seeing new planes, uh, you are pretty certain that what you're seeing is the 587th, the bomber regiment. And these are these amazing planes with like room for like three, a crew of three, and they're huge and they're like brand new. And they're one of the most amazing high-tech sort of strategic bombers around. And anybody flying them would be sort of amazing. Rumor has it that the great Marina Raskova herself is going to be leading the 587th with these amazing, cool bombers. It's so exciting. And as you're moving further, you get further and further out to sort of the ass end of this base. And you see all of these planes that are your planes. These are the planes. These planes, uh, Lena, you know these planes quite well because they're often used as crop dusting planes. Uh, so I'm sure you've flown them before. Um, they are not the newest 
planes. They are not. Uh, they're open cockpit biplanes that are not really used much except for crop dusting, and they're loud. Uh, and they go 60 miles an hour. Other planes are going 400 miles an hour. Not yours, though. But that's cool. Uh, and you're seeing all of these planes, and quite a few of them are still in boxes and being assembled. And you can, you can see um, near the end of this area, you see what must be Logistics Area 6. Uh, you have uh, a large sort of area where there are boxes everywhere. And there's a bit of a commotion happening uh, in, this, in this area where you're approaching. You've got um, a woman. She's sort of small. She's Chinese. And she's got a bit of a, a, a rumpled, rumpled uniform, uh, but she's got very perceptive eyes. And she is angry. She is not happy. She's got her arms crossed, and she's looking for all the world like this is the worst thing ever. And, she, and she's surrounded by all of these boxes, boxes and crates of perhaps uniforms and all the things that she's supposed to be giving out to people. And there's like a bit of a group of women waiting to get supplies. But what you also see is a truck. And there's in this truck, you, the back is open, and there are men that are going out and picking up these supplies and putting them on this truck. And as you're approaching and getting into earshot, you can hear this man, and he's um, uh, not super tall, but broad, and got a bit of a pot belly. Uh, he's got a small beard, and uh, he's red faced, like maybe he's drunk too much vodka, and he's in uniform, and he says, Well,. You can't have all of the supplies. 588th doesn't need everything. 218th, best night bombing regiment of all time. We'll need some of these uniforms. I'm afraid you just, we have to just take them. I'm so sorry. And he just, and he is directing sort of, which look to be like privates maybe, to take these supplies uh, that are probably your supplies and put them on this truck. And she says, these are our supplies. Mother Russia gave these supplies to us. And he says, Sergeant Yu, I am senior sergeant. I'm afraid that's just how it goes. And you approach just as they're taking in, like, a good number of these boxes. But she's just a sergeant, and she doesn't seem to be able to say much about this in this moment. What do you all do? Well... That's just fine. I suppose they want us to fly naked. And he looks at you and he goes, Ha! Flying naked? You'd get frostbite on all the places. Too bad. And he directs one more crate to be brought back onto this truck. Who gave you the authority to take these anyway? Well, I am supply sergeant for the 218th. A uh, senior sergeant, as a matter of fact. So... I have rank. Mm. Yeah, you definitely are rank. Thank you. He did not get it. <laughs> <laughs> Senior Sergeant Boris Smirnov, if you need anything, uh, I have best supply set up in all of base. Let me know. Uh, sorry you have old uniforms, but the boys need the best new uniforms. You can't have everything, huh? Oh, well. How much for equality? Oh, equality. Uh, I'm more for quality, you know? And our pilots have best quality. So, have best supplies. So, what you're saying is that there's no way that we can convince you to leave the supplies that we were delegated to us. What do you mean? Well, I don't know. I mean, I assume there's something that you need. Hmm. It well, seems your, your men already have uniforms. Well, we need extra uniforms in case something happens. Well, certainly there's something you would need more. Hmm. Who are you? Because you all look like civilians to him, right? Who, who are you? I'm Tatiana Petrov. Hmm. What can you offer? What do you have? Do you have access to connections? What do you have? Well, that all depends. What do you need? I could just offer you everything from here until the war is over. But if you don't need anything, well, then it's a pointless discussion. Hmm. And 
the quartermaster, Sophia Yu, she's watching this to see, with great interest, to see how this will play out. He says, okay, this is what I need. I need... He thinks about it, and he looks at the privates, he goes, privates, go take smoke. You Petrov, mm. do you know people, he looks around, who have deck of cards, like many decks of cards for playing poker? Oh, I'm sure I could find people. I need 10 or bucks. I need a set of cards for poker. I only have one, I need more. How many do you need? Mm. Well, 10 would be good. Okay. Well, I will see that you get your decks of cards so long as you leave our supplies with us. Hmm. I think this is a scrounging roll. I would like you to use one of your moves. Uh, and a scrounge is for luck. So give me a luck roll. Let's see what you get. My tokens aren't working. Why are your tokens not working? That's Let's a see. Fine question. Uh, I said luck, yes? Yes. Let me proc it for you. Okay. All right. That's a partial success. That's right. Tatani's feeling very lucky today. Hmm. He says, okay. I tell you what, I will take some supplies because we need them, but I will leave most. However, my boys will not unpack this truck. You will have to do that. Lena immediately like goes over and starts just like, <laughs> do, 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 like just, but it's, she's small, so it's pretty difficult. Tatania shoots him a look. Thank you so much for your generosity. Walks uh, over and starts unloading it too. Hey, equality, you can also move boxes, but I will be waiting for those cards. Hey, do you play poker? I do. Well then, other thing you must do is join my poker game at some point in time. Well, I would be happy to if you don't mind losing. <laughs> I never lose, I am Boris. I always win. Well, consider it on then. Good, good. All right, it is on. And uh, after you move most of these crates out, he keeps like five. He says, well, Petrov, and crate movers, and Sergeant Yu, I will be around. Come on. And he gets somebody to drive him. He sits in the passenger seat, and this truck sort of moves off. Yeah. Uh, as the truck moves off, uh, very quickly, uh, Nikita puts back her pocket knife. <laughs> if we weren't going to get back some of the supplies, she was going to pop a tire. <laughs> And so she just kind of like very quickly puts it back in her pocket. Like, I wasn't doing anything. <laughs> Sergeant Yu looks at you and she goes, Petrov, thank you. He's been doing this all week. Every time we get supplies, he comes in and he, he just commandeers some of them. Well, I get the sense that now that we're here, he's going to be doing that a lot less. I hope so. And, uh... Petrov, and he, she looks and she goes, oh, uh, pardon me, and she salutes you, junior lieutenant. <sighs> no, not a problem. Uh, and you're all new recruits. I'm afraid we have only men's uniforms and they may be too big for you, but thankfully we actually do have uniforms and most importantly, we have boots. Well, take what we can get. And it's a good place to start. 
she opens up the crates and you see these uniforms and they, uh, these are brand new women's regiments and they do not really have women's uniforms. So they just have uniforms that are a little bit too big, the boots are too big, and you have no socks, but you have these wraps that will wrap around your feet so that you can sort of fit in these boots. And she's sort of giving you these things. And as you're sort of finding uniform pieces that will fit you, and she's handing you rations, she leans over to um, Volkov, to Nick, and she says, Mm -hmm. Say, I noticed you uh, had a little bit of a knife. Maybe a little bit of one, yes. Hmm. She nods. She says, you know, I'm Sergeant Sophia Yu. I like to keep my ear to the ground and know everything that's happening and... I like to know people who are not afraid to mix it up a little bit, if necessary. I believe we have an understanding. Okay, so look, sometimes, sometimes these guys in the 218th, they show up at night sometimes to break in and take our stuff. I usually can see them coming, but I just like to know in case stuff needs to be ever ever to need to be gotten back, who I might call on for missions, you know. Ah, uh, missions. Yes. Uh, do keep me in mind. Okay. W- where are you from? Uh, I am from the place with the name. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't memorize the thing I was saying. Uh, Very mysterious. Oh, I'm, I'm from Vladivostok, out, out east. I've never been to your town, but nice mm. to meet you. Uh, it's a place. It's fine. And she says, you know, if I see anything that you might like, I'll, I'll keep my eye open. I would appreciate that, and I will uh, keep my ears open. And she says, watch out. Some of these uh, women in this unit, they're very fancy. So watch out for them. Ugh. Fancy. Okay. I think I follow you. They... You know, we don't have class anymore in, in Mother Russia. But not everybody grows up on a farm. Some people grow up in much nicer places in Moscow. We met one of those on the way in, in fact. Oh. Hmm. Going to be a rude awakening, I think. <sighs> well, oh, and she says, uh, all of you wait. And she all hand, she hands you like the small, like a small bottle of vodka for each of you. She says, these are your rations of vodka. Ah. Don't drink them all at once. Oh. Titania takes a a sniff and frowns. It's not good quality vodka. Dana's just ecstatic. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, you are all, oh, you are all in the same unit. Second squadron, C section. Uh, The numbers are painted on the barracks. You're going to want to go all the way down there. Uh, Go there. Get yourself settled in. You'll be called by your training officer fairly soon. Thank you. Much appreciated. And as you make it down, you see these barracks. They're not the newest, but they've been freshly painted. Uh, And you find yours that says 2C on it. And you walk into this barracks. And as you're walking, generally speaking, you've got different sizes of barracks. Uh, You can see these barracks that have the section and squadrons on them. Uh, and uh, they're quite small. And then you have these much larger barracks that seem to maybe, they probably hold the mechanics and the staff and uh, who don't have as probably as nice as digs as you, although your digs aren't that nice. But as you move into your barracks, you, you walk in and it smells like paint. Um, they have clearly painted it recently and it still has that lingering smell. And when you walk in, you have, um, it's wooden, 
it's drafty. You've got three bunk beds on one side with long, tall wall lockers on either side of each bunk bed. And in one corner, there's a, a small stove, a, a heating stove, not for cooking, but just to heat. But it's pretty small and it doesn't really heat the whole room, so parts of it get kind of cold. And opposite, those bunk beds, you have a table with some chairs, you have some lines where you could probably hang up uh, some laundry to dry. And up in the far, far corner, on the top bunk, there's a woman. And she has got um, like a page boy, but it's sort of frizzy and a little bit messy. Uh, so, you know, you might think of like a, uh, and she's got little glasses uh, that she's looking at a, a small book. And her uniform is a little bit too big. Um, her, her hair is, is, is a dark, dark, uh, dark, dark brown, and she's got sort of brown eyes. And she looks up at you all, she just rolls her eyes and goes back to reading. Good, nice and friendly, the way I like it. And she mm -hmm. looks at you, she goes, and she just is like, hmm. And what's your name? I have a question for you about your character. Tatiana Petrov, when she was living in Leningrad, did she hang out in cafes that were sort of cosmopolitan and arty? She, she was, she was there. <laughs> um, you might recognize her vaguely. She seems familiar to you. Mm -hmm. like you don't, you can't put your finger on it, but she seems familiar to you. Did you perchance spend much time in Leningrad before things went sideways? And she turns to you, hearing your accent. She goes, yes, I'm from Leningrad. And she, and she well, she's like, huh. And she gets off the bunk and she puts her, she leaves her book up on the top of that bunk. Sarah Rabinowitz, who are you? Tatiana Petrov. Petrov. Hmm. I used to hang out at the Wet Dog Cafe, where the poets would hang. Were you there? Ah, uh, yes. That was one of my usual spots. Oh, I went there all the time. Ah, oh, when I think about the poets coming and reading all of their works. It was amazing. You are a poet yourself, then? Well, I dabble. What about you? I stuck more to the visual arts myself. Oh, did you study at university? I did, until I decided that being in the sky was more the place for me. I, I did not study there. I, I just I hung out in the cafes, but I, in the cabarets. I, I wanted to, I, I was going to, but then the war started and, and here I am. I hope your family's okay. Um, they, they were, last I had heard. Hmm. Mine too. Then she looks at the other two of you. All right. I suppose I don't hate either of you either. Well, thank you. Where are you from? Who are you? I am uh, Nikita Volkov. You can call me Nick. Nick. Sarah. You? Uh, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm Lena Dosmanova and um, I'm, I'm, um, hi. Where are you from? Um, uh, down south. I came on a farm. Um, I learned to farm, but I also went to the agricultural school because I think that it's important to be in the sky and especially more important to really just do something and, and be something. Hmm. So in this game, all the characters have a nature. Uh, and the nature is named after a bird that sort of describes sort of like part of your core personality. And I would love to know each one of you, what is your character's nature? Uh, my character's nature is Raven. My character's nature is the owl. Mm -hmm. And I am the hawk. So ravens are mysterious and calculating. Hawks are love adventure they love to fly and owls are wise but also dangerous <laughs> they, uh, because owls are predatory birds and so each character has a has a nature that sort of defines them a little bit and she looks you all over and she says well how long have you been flying long enough 
Um, since I was 12, I wasn't supposed to, but. Okay. Leningrad? Well, I was flying since the beginning of university and discovered that I had a particular talent. Well, it looks like none of y'all will get me killed. Good. What about yourself? Oh, well, I've been flying for three years. I went to glider school and I was good at it. And I thought maybe the best way to be a poet is to be in the air, you know? You write poems about flying? I try. I mostly read other people's poems, though, but huh. I haven't yet been able to figure out how to capture what it's like to be in the air in a poem form yet. I mean, it's just like being alive, like really being alive, you know? I guess that is a hard thing to capture in poetry. Right. I've thought about it so much, and I feel like everything I try is just too cliche. I think yeah. clouds, and uh, it's not right. Well, I think once you do it for long enough, the muse will speak to you. Well, there's supposed to be six of us. There are only four so far? Yeah, there are only four right now. Well? I guess that was apparent. I think it'll be okay. And that's when you hear a clump, like something heavy outside. Lena jumps and then she like goes to the door. And there you see a young man. Uh, he's, uh, you know, maybe 20 about your age. And he's got this heavy steamer trunk. Mm -hmm. And he's got this valise. And there you see Anastasia Sharetova. And he like just pulls this look, and she's not carrying anything, by the way. And he pulls her steamer trunk and her valise. And he's um, exhausted and sweaty, and it's also really cold out, so that's not great. And he pulls these things in, and he's just like, well, here you go. And she looks at him like he's some sort of like dreamy matinee idol. And he just looks tired. And she's like, thank you so much for taking my things. I couldn't carry it myself. I mean, as you know, I'm just a girl and it's just like really hard for us to carry things. So thank you. Oh. And he's like, oh. And he waves to everyone. Um, hi, I'm Alexi. I'm Lena. Alexei Popov, it's nice to meet you. And he shakes your hand vigorously, a little bit too long, and he's like a little bit too excited. And he's like, so, uh, what do you all do here? It's my first day. Perhaps we should discuss this not in the women's bunks. Right, yes, that's, I would be in trouble if I got caught here. I'm sorry, I will see you later. Have fun flying, and it was nice to meet you. Uh, bye. And he sort of like backs out and then like leaves. And then she's like, it's so good to see you all. I'm so happy that we're all in the same section. I got lost. Have you seen the size of the lockers? And she looks at them. She's like, hmm. Well, I could maybe use some of your locker space. No, absolutely not. Lena looks torn. Like. <laughs> And she just stays really quiet and she like makes herself even smaller if that was possible. Like And then oh. Anastasia says, Lena, right? Lena, last name. Uh, Dosmanova. Right. We're gonna be best friends. I can yeah. see it already. Yeah, I bet they will. Tonight <laughs> says under her breath. <laughs> and, Tanya. Yeah. What? Let's uh, let's go find a bunk away from this. <laughs> yes, yes. You know, I think it's best that we go over there. And then Sarah goes. Sarah goes. Oh, yeah. Uh, Tatiana's my bunk mate. I'm I'm afraid you can't use our lockers. Sorry. 
and then Anastasia looks at you both. She's, have you already? I would have been here earlier because I, you know, I rode in on the on the truck and everything, but then I got lost and I wasn't quite certain how to get here. But luck, so but, so, Lena will be my bunkmate. Oh, good. Are you going to be bunkmates instead? Yes, I think I think everyone here is perhaps spoken for. But however, we are still waiting on on one more, and I'm sure they would be happy to bunk with you. Oh, all right. Hey, I have a question. Since we're all here together, who do you want to marry? I want to marry. Tanya walks away. (laughs) (laughs) Lena just looks really confused. Like she's like, Uh, we might die. Oh, we won't die, but we might meet our husbands here. Have you seen the planes? Have you ever flown in a crop duster plane like that? Have you ever? I have a lot of flying experience. A lot. Gonna go hop on the top bunk of the bunks that uh, have been figured out and ignore this conversation. <laughs> I have a lot of experience, like more than everybody. I have the most experience. I've flown planes like that all the time. All the planes, I've flown so many planes. You've flown all the planes? Yes, I have a lot of experience. I really want to believe you, but it's really difficult when your lies are that blatant. I'm not lying. I, I've flown. You can't get in one of these units without experience, and I, I have it. It's on my record and everything. But you said all the planes. Look, we can be best friends, but we've got to be honest with each other. That's just how things work for me. Well, I have flight experience, maybe just not 500 hours. How many hours? Some hours. Like five? No, I have, I have, I have, I have 113 hours of experience. Sonia hears this from the other side. Really? But I have a lot of other things too. Like the ability to get people to carry your luggage? Well, he was just being helpful. Look, you're here now and we all are going to need to work together. But Lena's right that we are going to need to be honest with each other and we can't have this happening in this way. So we're going to need you to figure out what you can fit into your locker and get rid of everything else and be honest with us so we don't kill each other when we're out there. Okay, but I have one question for you. Yes. Who do you want to marry? Walks away. And so she like opens up one of the trunks and she starts trying to figure out what, and there's a lot of um, fancy clothes, uh, impractical shoes, a lot of magazines, pictorial magazines for fashion magazines. Um, There's a lot of stuff that doesn't seem at all useful for training. And then she says, oh, oh. And then she pulls up a box of chocolate. She's like, I've got chocolate. Would you like some, everyone? I haven't um, had um, one. Yes, it's it's French. I, it's from overseas, abroad. And she opens up the box and she hands it to Lena. Lena like takes one. She's just like. So, do you have, by chance, any decks of cards in that big suitcase of yours? Well, I have one. She holds one up. Tatiana grabs it. I'll take that. 
Am I not allowed to have it? Oh, no. That's just to make sure we don't fly in the nude. Oh. We pre-traded things. Oh. Do you know I'm going to be in charge of this section? One what? <laughs> Excuse me? Yeah, I'm a junior lieutenant. Well, at least you won't be in charge of everyone. <laughs> I mean, it's not official yet, but I'm pretty sure that I'm going to be in charge of the section. That's great for you. And I want you all to know that I'm very fair and I love everyone and it's going to be a really fun time. I <laughs> thought Diana starts to walk outside of the bunk to see if there's a place they need to be for anyone to wrangle this child. <laughs> and, and, and she does really feel like a child to you. She does not feel 20 or whatever old she's supposed to be. And as you open up the door, you see two women who are just about to walk in. Um, you see uh, a woman who's sort of tall and lanky, redhead, uh, and she's sort of uh, not particularly sort of broad, but, you know, but, but her uniform is very tightly pressed and crisp. And then you see... Masha Rudina, your training officer, who's there just looking angry, like she often does. And she says, <sighs> Section C. It's your, well, everyone else is here. This is your last one. Mm, introduce yourself. Introduce yourself. She goes, I'm a junior lieutenant, Polia Makarova. I'm the best pilot, and I think I was supposed to be in the 586th. And um, your training officer just goes like, if you don't want to be here, you don't need to be in the Air Force at all. And then we goes, it's fine, sorry. She says, all right, all of you all, this is what's going on. You all need to get into your uniforms right away. And she looks at this clipboard she has. You need to be out on the flight line in 15 minutes dressed we have formation, very important. Marina Raskova is going to be here to give you your oath of office. And I don't want any of you to embarrass me. We're having orientation. Um, I'm looking at this and it seems as if, who's Anastasia Shermetimova? And then Anastasia sort of like waves, <coughs> it's me. Says here you're supposed to be section leader. She goes, yes. Well, you'll be section leader for the moment. You'll be in charge. Make sure everyone's addressed in 15 minutes out in the flight line. And she turns and she leaves. Lena's like taking off her boots. <laughs> she's like taking it, like she's just like throwing herself, trying to get everything in order. And Anastasia's like, oh, fun. And she just starts like gingerly unpacking her steamer trunk. You're gonna need to hurry up with that if we're going to be out in 15 minutes. So it's just like, takes off her coat, sets it in the locker and starting to change as well. And Sarah and Polia, they're changing and she's like, oh, okay. Now you mean? Yes, right. now. Right. Immediately, this moment. Okay. And so she starts getting dressed, but she doesn't quite know what to do with her hair. And it's like not really fitting under the hat. And she just like tries to do something with it. <laughs> and you all eventually get done. She's the last to get done. Everyone else is finished before she is. And you're all gonna be late if she doesn't finish up. Uh, Lena starts like doing her buttons for her. Although to be fair, like two of Lena's buttons are undone. Like she's. She's not put together herself, um, but she's just like <laughs> trying to get it in there. Like, like they don't mind. <laughs> so Diana throws up her hands and just like bun pin. <laughs> <laughs> You pit up her hair, uh, you get the buttons done. She is ready. You can get out there within the 15 minutes before it's too late. And you all make your way to this flight line and there are, there's a plane up front and there are all these women waiting excitedly to see what's going to happen. And you see a group of women in amazing uniforms walk up. 
And there, and you've seen her photograph is Marina Raskova. And for those who don't know, Marina Raskova is basically like a, Amelia Earhart is like the, the American Marina Raskova, or Marina Raskova is like the Russian Amelia Earhart. She was the first woman to be given the uh, Hero of the Soviet Union, which is like the Medal of Honor, like the highest award. And she was this amazing pilot uh, navigator in the 30s. And in 1937, she and her crew made the longest trip, right? Sort of an all-female crew. They flew from the far, far west of the Soviet Union to the far, far east of the Soviet Union. They broke this huge record to do this, but then they couldn't land. And so she had to parachute out. And then she survived with just like no water and food for 10 days in the swamp before she made it back. And this huge heroic thing. And uh, so everybody knows her. She's this amazing figure that everybody is like really excited about. And it was her that got these women's regiments founded because all these women wanted to volunteer and the Soviet Union said no. And she went to Stalin personally and she said, Stalin, there are all these amazing women pilots. You've got to, you've got to let us form these regiments. And he allowed her personally to form these three regiments, uh, the 586, 87, and the 88th. And so none of you would be here without her. And there she is uh, in front of you all. And next to her, is uh, there are, you've got like a, a sort of like a, a cadre of women next to her. Um, you've got the woman who's probably in charge of your regiment and the woman next to her, and then two other women next to them. And one of them looks a lot like Anastasia. And she looks really unhappy about the situation, about what's going on. That's a, like the thing you notice. And Marina Raskova, she addresses you all. And she says, girls, you can do anything. Each individual can do whatever she wants to do and whatever she has to do. Nothing is impossible. There are no bosses to be afraid of. If we want to accomplish something, we can manage it ourselves. I am here to give you the oath to become an airwoman. Please repeat after me. I state your name. I'm Hi, Tatiana. Yelena Logo. Promise to rise in the defense of my motherland. Promise to rise in the defense of my motherland. The Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. The Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. As a fighting woman. As a fighting woman. Fighting woman. Of the Workers and Peasants Red Army. Of the Workers and Peasants Red Army. I promise to defend it bravely. I promise to defend it bravely. Skillfully. 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 With dignity and honor. With, With dignity and honor. Sparing neither my blood nor my life itself. Sparing neither my blood nor my life itself. For the achievement of total victory over our enemies. For the achievement of total victory over our enemies. You are now natural born Soviet airwomen. Congratulations. Welcome. I now turn you over to your regimental commander, Yevdokia Bershomskaya. And she nods, she, they salute, and she drives off on a small vehicle and you're left with this woman uh, who is the major and she's in charge of your unit. And she looks at you all and she says, welcome to the 588th. We are going to be one of the most fearsome, effective, and dangerous fighting units in the entire Red Army, and I'm proud to have you all as my airwomen. I will turn this over to your training officer, Senior Lieutenant Masha Rudina. They salute, and the whole cadre leaves. And you see Anastasia try to like make a wave to one of the women in the cadre who does not look at her. And they move off, and you just have uh, Masha Rodina in front of this plane. She says, all right, we have to start. First things first, I want to introduce you to this plane, the PO2, the PO2. This plane, you may know it from crop dusting days, but it is one of, well, it is the plane we're using. It has a top speed of cruising speed of 60 miles an hour. It has no electronics. There are three places where if a bullet goes through, this plane is done. The engine, which is here, and the pilots, here. Don't let that happen. 
All right. We're going to be doing night bombing, harassment bombing. We're going to be flying every three minutes, bombing, dropping bombs at close range targets. We'll be having six bombs. And she starts pointing out all the parts of this airplane and how it works. And she says, you need to memorize everything that is in the cockpit of your plane because there are no lights. And you have to do it by hand. If you do it by memory. And she says, this is going to be, we have four months to train you. What is three years worth of training? It's going to be hard. You'll have to work very difficult. Not only do you need to learn how to navigate at night with no help, but bomb small targets with no help. But you have to learn to become fit or else you'll die. And it is my job to make sure not one of you dies. There will be no deaths from any of my trainees, and that is an order. If you die, I will haunt you. I hope that is understood. Understood. Good. So our plane is not a fighter. It is just a bomber. But it is a good plane. It's easy to repair, although it needs a lot of them. And we are going to be flying at night without help. You must know that these bombs are... Well, the release mechanisms are somewhat tricky. If you release and they don't go, the navigator is going to have to climb out on the wing and release the bombs by hand. Also, these engines are loud. They're really loud. They're so loud that they're going to alert the Nazis of our coming. Best thing you can do is just shut off your engines when you, when you get close and glide over, drop your bombs, put the engines back on, and then take off. You don't have a lot of maneuverability. This is gravity fed. You can't go upside down. That means that if you get caught in any of these searchlights, it's going to be hard for you to get out. You have to try anything you can. That'll be difficult. There are no parachutes for you. So if your plane goes up in flame, you're going to die. If your plane gets shot down, you're going to die. Don't get shot down. This plane was originally equipped with a machine gun, but the machine gun was meant to fight other biplanes, which our enemy is not using. So there will be no machine gun on this plane. You'll just have to not get caught. That is your job, but it is one of the most important jobs that we have. As soon as the sun goes down, we're going to start dropping bombs nonstop until the sun comes up every single night until we win. First things first, all of you have to get haircuts. You need your hair needs to be short. You can't have long hair in these sorts of things. Then you have the night to yourselves. Go get mess. Tomorrow morning, we're starting training. You're all dismissed. Thank you. And then Anastasia, like, grabs and tugs on Lena's jacket, her, her tunic. What? What? Did you see? Did you see? See? What? That was my sister. Up there? My sister was up there. That's, that's good. I'm glad I'm that you was there. <laughs> that explains it. Hmm? That's a important thing. My sister is the deputy Paula truck of this unit. She's like the deputy secret police of the entire unit. So, um, do you and your sister talk a lot? No, she didn't know I was coming exactly, but I can prove to her that I can do things. Well, I think the first thing you need to prove to her is that you can cut off your hair and listen to orders. <laughs> Lena is just perpetually like attempting to fix her uniform and it just doesn't, it doesn't work. <laughs> like She says, I don't want to cut my hair though. Uh, Nikita runs a hand through her already very short cropped hair and just kind of <laughs> hands in pockets and sort of just wanders away. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I don't think any of you have long hair, correct? No, mine's fairly short. And a lot of the women have, like, some women have longer hair, but Anastasia's got the longest, and she's just, like, holding on to her hair. <laughs> she's like, well... Lena, like, puts a hand on her, and she's like, just think. 
it's less to get caught when you're when you know you're trying to get into the plane every time it's less to worry about when we're going on the bombing runs and that means more time for protecting mother russia okay okay and it'll be easier to fit under your hat right i'll, I'll see you all back in the barracks does anybody want to hold my hand while i get my hair cut have fun <laughs> and she wanders off the other direction where where there are like gaggles of women going off to get their hair cut, leaving you all um, back towards your, uh, to get some mess and back towards your barracks. Whew. Oh, um, a lot. Yeah. And, uh, you know, not all of us will probably survive, and only if we're really good at what we do, and I do not have high hopes for her. We are all a team, and we have to think of ourselves as a unit. If one of us don't survive, then none of us survive. We'll cover for each other, we'll be close, we'll make sure that we're able to do each of these night rides the best of our ability. After all, they're having us do what the men simply can't. Hmm. I still think it's going to be a problem. And you're saying this as you're walking back to your barracks, and when you get to the barracks, you see inside of your barracks the woman who sort of looks like Anastasia and your training officer. And they're in your barracks, and it seems as if they are just finished with perhaps an argument. Uh, there seems to be some sort of um, tension in the air. And the woman who you think of, who's probably the sister, sort of just storm, is like storms out, stops at the door and waits. And your training officer says, Junior Lieutenant Petrov. Yes, ma'am. Comrade, you will be the section leader for this section. And she just gives a look to this other woman. It would be my honor to take on that position. Good. I am the training officer, and I make the decisions who runs each of the sections and each of the squadrons. Is that clear? And she's saying that to you, like you women, but you think she's really saying it to this other woman who's standing by unhappy. <laughs> Perfectly clear. Good. And then she just looks at the woman and the woman leaves and closes the door and she says, all right, listen up. Nothing can happen to that girl. You got it? I will watch her like watching a baby. Comrade Sergeant Dozminova. Okay, that might be difficult. She is the sister of the deputy Politruck. If anything happens to her, it will be bad for everyone. Make sure nothing happens to her. You know, it would be much safer for her and nothing at all would happen to her if she uh, doesn't go up. <laughs> I'm afraid that is not going to be an option. But I've looked at your records. You all are competent. Just take care of it. Tomorrow, we have our first flight. We will do what we can, comrade. Good. And she, like, just... <sighs> and turns and walks out. And you are left in your barracks, you three. Sarah's there, she didn't need to get a haircut. Um, Polly is not there at the moment, she's probably eating, and you have you four in your barracks this evening uh, on this base for the first time, your first night in this place. Well, I, for one, pull out the uh, icky vodka and um, we're gonna start going into this. Oh. Yeah, definitely gonna have a bit of vodka. <laughs> I like Lena, this idea. Lena, do you still have those chocolates that she gave you? Oh, yeah, she just left them right under her pillow. 
kind of pulls them out, <laughs> puts them on the table. She did offer them to us. She did want to share. I think it would be a shame not to take her up on that. I know Artie has like two in her mouth and she's just like. Yeah, so I, Titania is going to just join in the chocolate party. And it's good chocolate. Yep. Definitely getting in on that. <laughs> and just the biggest like smirk on her face about this. <laughs> well, we should also um, save some because then we can have more chocolate parties. I think that's a oh, wonderful there's idea. No there's no room for them in her trunk. We should probably keep them somewhere safe. My, um, I have a lot of room in my locker. I think so, that's a wonderful idea. Besides, Sarah, it makes the vodka almost palatable. Sarah's like, hmm, we do need to protect her from chocolate. And Sarah just sort of like picks up one, <laughs> eats it, takes a shot of vodka, and goes back to reading her book of poetry. Yes, my concern here is that uh, the biggest thing we're going to have to protect her from is herself, unfortunately. I am concerned about whoever will have to fly with her. Told well, you, trouble. We're all very good or else we wouldn't be here. So we will be able to do this. We will have success. And who knows if she really wants to prove herself that much, she may make herself useful yet. I wish that I had the same positive, hopeful outlook that you have. It's the only one one can have. Oh, trust me, there's other options. <laughs> well, so long as we're trying to keep her safe, that's the only one we can have. Hmm, fair point. Besides, I'm sure if we gave her to the other unit, we wouldn't have to find nine more decks of cards. Hmm, maybe you should send her out to get more nine the the cards i bet she would be able to uh sweet talk all of the the boys hmm you might be onto something yes i think we'll be able to find use for her yet and yeah. keeping her safe keeping us safe <laughs> and the as you know and eventually polia comes in and she's like just happy she's feeling good with herself and she like slaps uh, Titania Petrov on the back. She's like, all right, chief. And she sort of sits in her bunk. And she's like, she's out like a light. And eventually Anastasia comes in and she's like all red, red eyed as if she's been crying and her hair's short. It's not that short, like still got some length to it, but you know, maybe about here. And she just sort of like sits in her bunk looking like a mess. Like, she just looks so miserable. And she's like, well, I'm a real soldier now. Well, that seems well, to be exactly what you wanted. These are happy times. But It's fun, isn't it? You were expecting the fun and you're having it now. But I have best friends now. Oh, who are they? You yeah, silly. What? Why don't you come down here and have a drink? Okay. And she like crawls over and she sits down by the table with you all. And she like takes a drink of the vodka and she goes, this is bad vodka. Is it? Extremely bad. Drink up. Oh, it's really bad, Lena. It's bad. Can you get good vodka? Probably. I think that would make you feel much better. Okay. I think that would make all of us feel much better, really. That'll be my mission. I'll get good vodka. You're my best friends. I've never had best friends. And she takes her. <laughs> shot. A wonder. Oh, wait. And she goes into her the big steamer trunk and she pulls out the Victrola and she puts it on the table and she winds it up. And she puts a small record on there. She puts the record on. And this. So this little foxtrot, sort of a kind of a, a jazz tune, sort of just plays out on the Victrola. 
Lena gets up and she just sort of starts doing her own little dance sort of thing. Um, and every so often when there's like the lilt tip in the music, she's like, well, sup. And then just like dance, dance, well, sup. And Anastasia just smiles. Like she's just sort of happy to be in this room uh, with you all with the music playing and a little bit of vodka and chocolate on this first night. And so I will ask you all, how are you feeling right now on your first night? Uh, a little exasperated. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because it seems like everybody is competent except for one. <laughs> and that's problematic when you don't know who you might be paired up with to try and not die. I think Tatani feels determined. Lena is um, somewhere between excited and terrified. She fully expects to die, uh, but she's excited at the prospect of actually doing some good for Russia and taking care of the, the country that she loves so much. Um, but she's also like, in addition to sort of being excited, like she, the excitement is also coming from the fact that like, she hasn't really been exposed to Victrola before. Um, and this vodka is good for her <laughs> in the sense of like, this is the best quality vodka she's had. Mm -hmm. um, and she has chocolates. And so yes, they might die tomorrow or the next day or the day after that. And that's terrifying, but this moment's not so bad. And with that, we're going to read our donations and go on break. So everyone, uh, we're gonna go on break, but we have some donations to read. Let's see what we have here. Oh my goodness. We have a couple of donations to read and I want to, so first off, I wanna thank everybody for their donations and everyone for being here. Let's see what we have. Um, so we have a donation from Evie. Oh my goodness. Hi, Evie. How are you? Thank you for the donation of $50 who says, Nah, Texan. Oh my God. That's a uh, translated night, which is, oh my gosh. Uh, <laughs> so good. Uh, That's right. <laughs> Willen TW, who is our wonderful wiki uh, guru, says, this has been an expected night twitch. Awesome intro. Great to see you all. Thank you so much. Uh, we have a uh, comrade propaganda bot. <laughs> <laughs> donating five dollars who says for all of you for being so amazing and in uniform comrade propaganda bot would like you to honor your efforts with the order of the rainbow banner go fly bomb nazis and we Ooh. will and then we also have oh hey uh shell game you have a gift sub thank you um i just want you to know that Artie snack gifted you a sub by the way <laughs> And then Evie donates $5 and says, random thought, but your beard is wonderful tonight, Trooper. Oh, thanks. Love in the gray, it's very distinguished looking. It's no longer blue. Uh, so thank you so much for these uh, donations. We're gonna go on a short 10 minute break. And when we come back, all of our night witches are going to go on their first training mission. And we're gonna figure out what this base looks like. So go hydrate. Drink some water, stretch your legs. Our cast is going to do the same. And we will see you in about 10 minutes.
and welcome back to part two of the first session of Night Witches, Toil and Trouble, which is a Macbeth reference for those who want to know it. Uh, welcome <laughs> back, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. It is much appreciated. We got a few more donations, and I wanted to read them out because I want people to know what their donations are because they're amazing. Uh, we have one from PH, from Paladin Hulk, who's amazing, who says, Premier Hype uh, for $5.69. Uh, so nice to see new faces. Welcome to the channel. I hope, all of your, I hope you all enjoy your time with all of us. Uh, Drunkly Romantic comes in with five and says, Kick some ass, Night Witches! All, in, all, in all caps. Uh, Proxy Grinny donates five and says, This is on behalf of Grinny Weasley, who couldn't be here, but just wants to scream and say that your uniforms all look so good, and you're amazing, and this is wonderful, and ah! <laughs> and then flops over. Uh, <laughs> and then there's a $50 from Flowers for Algernon, AJ, who says, To the beginning of a wonderful show, this has been fantastic, and I look forward to more. And then we have a Vera Pavlova fan for $5 who says, Leap, soar from the earth, embrace the witch of the darkest night, bear gifts from mother. Ooh. I dig well, it. <laughs> that's exciting. I, I'm excited for all of that. So we are coming into the second half. And at this point in time, something that's sort of, I think, fun about Night Witches is that for each duty station, there are six of them, uh, the players go and draw that duty station. And so let's bring you over to the duty station uh, screen. So the place where they're at right now is the Angles Airdrome, uh, which is where they're doing all of this accelerated training. And it is across the Volga River from the town of Sarat uh, Saratov. And there's classroom and ground-based instruction, and it happens there at Engels. And there are like hundreds of pilots there and people running around. And they've got flight exercises and tactical problems that have to sort of work themselves out. And they have to learn how to uh, navigate in the dark with nothing, how to, how to drop bombs with precision. So this is all the work that they're doing. And the pace is brutal. And the stakes are high. And anybody who's not good enough is going to be washed out. And so there's a lot of pressure to, to do what they need to do. So the Angles Aerodrome is this major center for flight training, buzzing at all hours with fighter, bomber, and transport crews learning how to handle their aircraft. And many people are getting to learn their wings right on their PO2. And the support here is ubiquitous and the resources are abundant. So anyone gets a plus one for scrounging or repair rolls because everything is well equipped if you can get it. Uh, but we have some questions that we have to ask uh, to set ourselves up. So the first thing is, I will say, we have to ask the crew, how is this Angles Aerodrome laid out? Where are the barracks, the flight line, the hangars, the classrooms, the supply depot, the command building, the control tower? Where's the exercise yard and the secluded spot by the Volga River where you can look over the bustling city of Saratov? So I will ask one of you night witches to give us, give us the flight line. I'll do that. And I will ask you before you draw it down, what is the unusual feature that makes the flight line that you have so difficult to fly out of? Um, right, like at the, the end of the flight line, there's these uh, low level hills that look a lot lower than they actually are. So when you're taking off, you really got to, um, time it right when you're adjusting the flaps and pulling up, right? Or else you have a, a tendency there. It's not the first time. If any of us run into these hills, it wouldn't be the first time that's happened. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So give us our flight line with these little hills at the bottom. And while this flight line is being made, uh, how about one of the of our other night witches draws where all the barracks are? Let's see, I will do this. Got it. And then Mac, why don't you tell us? Why don't you draw where uh, the hangars are, where all of your planes are? Okay. Uh, I guess they're going to be near the flight line here. Uh, wait. Mm -hmm. Uh, drew that wrong. 
Can and I delete shell her? game, will you take care of the classrooms? I will. I'm making some really lumpy looking hills here, so. All right. I, I like the hills. Oh, <laughs> hey. <they> be. <laughs> I, I see your topographical map skills over there. All right. Put the planes over here by the light line. Mm hmm. Um, and and the three boxes down here. What was this again? The barracks. Those are the barracks. Okay, and I'm drawing the classrooms. Huh? The classrooms. I want to put those near the barracks. And can I get someone to give us the exercise yard? Yeah, I could do that. I'm gonna put it down away from the barracks. I think. Be down here. Probably pretty big. Mm -hmm. All right. So I have questions to ask you all as we're making our, our beautiful space. I want to ask one of you lied about something on your regimental intake form. Who was it? Which one of you lied? about something on your intake form, and what did you lie about? I did. Ooh, tell me. My age. Ooh, tell me more. Actually, 17. Oh. Dun, dun, dun. You may not be the only 17-year-old in your section. I'm just saying. Oh. The truth comes out. Hey, I'm It's me. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> not at all. It's um, all of us. <laughs> Uh, okay, one of the one of the other two night witches take this question. Where exactly were you when the war started? I was at home in Leningrad. Mm. What were you doing? Um, I was still at university. Um, I had started to desire to hone the um, the fly, the gift of flight uh, a little bit more, but then once things started really happening there, I kind of just, I knew it was something I needed to do, um, but I kind of was able to get out, but didn't really see anyone or say any goodbyes or anything like that, kind of just jetted out. Because mm -hmm. um, that was kind of the only option at the time. Yeah. And for Lena, I have a question for you. Who do you know in the 218th the all male two eighteenth night bombing regiment. Um, can you uh, remind me the name of the kid? Was it Alexander? Alexandrov. Yes, uh, uh, Alexei. Alexei. Alexei Popov. Um, yeah, I think her and Alexei know each other. Um, mm -hmm. Through her brother, like she knows him more than he knows her. Mm hmm. Um, she's always seen him like hanging out with her brother and mm -hmm. she was always kind of there, like the kid that they just sort of ignored. Uh, so she know she actually knows him. So when she was like, hi, it was her being like, I'm a person, I exist. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And so one of the things that you know about him, uh, is that, you know, he's from your town. Uh, he hung out with your brother, uh, but... What's interesting is that his uncle is the commander of the 218th. So their, their branches of the family are not in the same spaces, you know, but his, his uncle was actually from a, you know, a, a big military family and uh, runs that all-male regiment. So you know the nephew of the commander of that regiment. I don't think she knows the connection yet. Mm -hmm. um, because she's only ever seen Alexi with her brother. Yeah. Uh, she hasn't necessarily seen him in supervisor settings. Okay, good. All right. So it is now, you're in a routine. I'm going to take us over here. We're in a routine of training. And you have got every day six in the morning, you're brought out to do exercises in the exercise yard. 
lots of push-ups and sit-ups and running and jumping jacks and calisthenics. Um, so all of this is happening. And then you're put in classrooms where you're given sort of hours and hours of classroom instruction about everything, right? From, from how to read maps, how to na na navigate, uh, how to do this in a wartime sitting. Uh, you've got, and you get your food regularly. And it's a lot of work. And it's a lot you have to memorize. Plus, practice going into the planes, learning the planes, how to deal with them. It's a lot that you're doing at all these times. And it's a fairly uh, regular steady stream and every morning after you're working out then you've got an inspection and usually it's uh, Masha Rudina your trainings officer comes in and she inspects your your barracks to make sure everything is clean so not only do you have to do your workouts you have to clean everything and you have to go and learn everything not only classroom things but also plain so it's it's very very heavy and you're often just exhausted all the time uh, but in these moments before you're going to go for your big first training mission you have time to what you do in Powered by the Apocalypse, you can sort of make these moves. You have times to reach out with each other or scrounge or try to work on repairing things. Uh, so I would like to ask, which one of you would like to make your first move? Uh, gonna be scrounging for, I think, playing cards. Mm. Now, where do you wanna go to try to get these playing cards? Uh, probably over to the men's barracks. Mm-hmm. Um, so you're going to head over to the men's barracks. Now they're like, like yours, you have lots and lots of barracks. Now to get to the men's barracks, you have to go all the way to the other end of the base, right? You have to pass by all the other women's regiments and you go all the way through. And when you get to the other side of the base, their barracks are nicer than yours. You know that you, and you, you probably guess they were, but they are. Yeah. And, and as you walk over there towards the, the men's unit, um, you hear that there's like a group of men and they've got uh, pilots and they've got these leather pilot jackets, you know, the sort of bomber jackets. They're really nice that you do not have and none of you in the 588th have. And they're like, I'm sure they look really warm and wonderful and they're all there. And uh, th one of them sees you and they like they do a wolf whistle. And they're like, hey, it's one of the skirts. Hey, skirt, what do you want? Uh... Looking for uh, some cards, perhaps. And one was like, cards? Ha! What you need is a sewing machine! <laughs> and like, they think Oh yes, I've never heard that before, ever. Very clever. That was a good one, right? It was a good one. Yeah. Oh, very impressive. I feel very put out by it. Good job. And they're not quite certain how to respond to that take on it. They're like, all right. What do you want? And why are you back over in your area? What are you doing here? I told you I'm looking for some playing cards. Me and some of the girls are looking to have a game. I don't know. I don't even think we're supposed to be talking to you. Cards or you don't know about girls playing cards? Can girls play cards? Whoa. You would be surprised. Probably by a lot of things. Uh, so what do you play? Do you play like, uh, old maid? Oh, old maid! Old maid! Uh, poker? And like, Alexi's off and he's like, hey, guys, knock it off. Like, they're air women like us. And then one of the guys like, you're an air woman? Alexi's an air woman! Get this! And Alexi just sort of like, kind of shrinks a little bit. I kind of give Alexi sort of a sympathetic look, like, all right, he tried. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, we do have cards. We have cards. We have extra cards we have. We could give them some so they could play cards too. And this main guy, and this guy that's like mostly interacting with you, he's got like one of these sort of severe military haircuts um, and it's sort of freshly done. And he's got like a big, big, bushy kind of Stalin mustache and like a little bit of like food, like stuck in one of his teeth, it's probably like some kind of like spinach or something that's just sort of there. And his uniform mm, does not look particularly well cared for. And he sort of shoots Alexia a look and he's like, hmm, why don't you give me this uh, scrounge roll, which I believe is luck. Let's see. Oh, 
My thing is not coming up. Where are you Click at? Clicking on the token. It's not coming up here. Oh, did you switch your thing to the mouse pointer instead of the drawing thing? Oh, yeah. That could be it. Obviously, my words are real great. The drawing yeah. thing. <laughs> Good words. Woo! Earlier, I was trying to find the word for scissors, and I was like, the pointy, choppy things. <laughs> uh, it is on the mouse pointer. Here, I've got it for you if you need it. Uh, that's luck. And you get a plus one because you're at angles. Oh. Oh. Hey. Okay. So give me your your last pitch. So this guy's looking at you and he's like, I don't know if we can spare our decks of cards for these skirts. Eventually you may get tired and want to have a game with some of the skirts. So why not let us... Uh, practice and give you more of a challenge when it comes to that. I'm sure you're getting tired of beating your own men. And Alexi just goes <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> And like, the guy doesn't get it. And he's like, well, Alexi's like, come on, just give him, give him some cards. I was like, all right. How many do you need? Like three or four? Uh, four will do. All right. And he goes, hey guys, go go in the barracks. You get one, you get one. And Alex is like, I I've got one. I can make it five. I'll take what I can get. And Alex is like, I I'll, I'll go pick him up. And like, sort of Alexi sort of like hops off uh, and he goes off towards some of the barracks. And you can see him right in the background. If, if this were like a, a movie scene, like you can see you and that the guy with the, with the spinach, like up front in the foreground, in the background, you can see Alexi sort of like bopping along in the back as he's going from barracks to barracks, picking up some like <laughs> decks of cards. Uh, and he finally comes back and he goes, uh, hi, um, so I got six decks of cards. I thought that might be helpful. It's very helpful. You've been, more than gracious. Um, could you do me a favor? Depends on what the favor is. So, um, when I, and then he, he stops because he realized he was going to say something that maybe he shouldn't say. And he goes, um, I think that there is a person in your section named, uh, Lina Dosmovia. Uh, yeah. Dosminova. She's from my hometown. Could you just say hi to her? One of the guys is like, oh, Lexi's got a girlfriend. He's like, shut up, I don't. She just knows my brother. I just, just say hi to her for me and just say that I, I, just say hi. That's all. I would be more than happy to help with that request. It's a reasonable one. One of the very few. Thanks. And just, uh, yeah, just say hi from home. That's all. I will do that. And the guy, the, the, this this guy, right, eager, he goes, well, I feel like you should maybe go back to your side of the base sometime soon. In my own time. And like, he <laughs> waits That's like he's going to wait you out <laughs> in some kind of like cool macho way. But he kind of just looks a little bit ridiculous just standing there. And it just becomes awkward. I just kind of death stare him for a couple of seconds and then just turn and slowly walk away. Like, obviously, clearly taking my time, like stopping to check my boot real quick and the laces and just <laughs> drooling and, you know, observing, you know, uh, you know, the, you know, if there's plants around as I'm going, just being a complete jerk about the whole thing <laughs> and he keeps trying to put like the thing is like there's no way to like be macho when you wait like there's no like macho waiting and so he <laughs> tries to do it it's just super awkward and then everybody else doesn't know what to do and alexi's just sort of like kind of happy like he's the only one who's like oh all right and everyone else is sort of like mm, mm, mm. and <laughs> <laughs> i feed on their discomfort <laughs> <laughs> Because you got a success, you're able to add one to the mission pool, as well as getting uh, six decks of cards. Fabulous. From the 218th, which are going to go back to the 218th. But it's cool. 
<laughs> yeah, they don't know that. They don't know that. And as you make it back, right, you're 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 walking back uh, across the base, and you know some of the dudes look. They're like, oh, like what is this woman doing in our area? But people don't say anything. And then as you're, uh, and then like sometimes like as you're walking back near to get back, you have to pass by the front gate. And as you're pack it, passing by the front gate, you're seeing some civilians who are there at the front gate doing a little bit of business. And like some of them look at you like, oh, and they see you in your uniform. And they're like so impressed by like to see you walk by. And some of them just sort of look and like they kind of talk like, oh, look at that. Look at that sort of amazing looking soldier as you walk by until you make your way back into the area, your your home area. Mm -hmm. uh, if they're in the the barracks there, I'm going to go over uh, to, uh, to Tanya's uh, bunk and just like drop the cards, just like lerp right on her bed next to her. <laughs> mm, well done. Yes. Uh, funny coming from the group that's going to get them eventually. I see that you are able to make things happen. I can really appreciate that about you. I do what I can. And uh, Lena. Yeah. Uh, Alexi uh, sends a hello. Oh, uh, I got to go. Lena jumps up and like leaves the barracks. <laughs> <laughs> interesting is is that all lexi said well once we got past the sort of blushing and stuttering part of it interesting mm -hmm. so settles in a little bit thinking on these matters <laughs> and and uh nikita sort of leans in and in her best imitation of anastasia it goes who are you going to marry? <laughs> <laughs> and you hear a snort, and there is Sarah in the top bunk in the corner with her book of poetry going, huh, hmm. <laughs> well, at least that's one mystery solved. <laughs> and then Sarah goes, but wait a minute. Didn't Anastasia want to marry that kid? Huh? Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> uh, where are you going? Where are you going, Lena? Um, so I think that her original intent was to like go and and say hello to him, um, but she doesn't really trust. Like, uh, she understands how things work in that in that time and that year, and she doesn't really trust that she's going to be a hundred percent safe. So she drops by the kitchen on her way there to get a knife um to just sort of take with her a little protection in case she needs it um and as she's like I, I i don't know if i need to roll for like stealing a knife from the mess hall okay cool nope you can get a knife from the mess hall pretty easy there are so, knives everywhere there are knives everywhere. now i will note that sophia <laughs> you your your quartermaster and supply sergeant she notices like this oh, yeah. like a telltale game and it says like sophia you will remember that she just she notices it <laughs> um she like sticks the, the knife uh in her in her boot so that she can still have it kind of accessible since or i guess she would have pockets in her pants so mm -hmm. does it she puts it there um and as she's like walking over there uh i'm gonna have her act up a little bit i mean i guess more than stealing knife from the mess hall um in that she kind of on her way there she gets and questionable about whether it's intentional or not, uh, distracted by the really cool planes that they had seen like as they were walking in. Mm -hmm. And she walks onto the airfield to take a better look at these planes. And she like climbs aboard one of them and is trying to check out the instruments and like understand. Because she's, I mean, she came from the agricultural yeah. school. So it's not, there's not a whole lot of, uh, she didn't work with the best planes. So to be able to see a plane that can have all of this high tech equipment mm -hmm. is an opportunity she just can't pass up. Mm -hmm. What do you want? Um, 
I ultimately want her to learn more about like how to navigate. Mm -hmm. um, and I would assume that that would kind of come from like, okay, there are these navigation tools. Oh, based on my knowledge of looking at like the stars and aligning that on top of the map, mm -hmm. I can see how I might be able to do like this with a compass as well. Mm -hmm. That actually is an eyeball. So ah. that's just a roll skill. Cool. So you are, you have got, now I want to ask, are you in the, the exciting bombers or in the fighter planes? Um, she probably would have gone to the bombers because she's about to fly bomber missions. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or hoping she's going to fly bomber missions. Give me a roll. Give, roll your skill. Um, hang on, I believe I have a modifier on this. It should be automatically baked in. Oh, okay, so I don't need to add any other yeah. modifiers? Mm -mm. Oh, a partial success. So yeah. you get one forward, so you can ask one question whenever you want to about sort of this setup, and it will allow you to sort of get a plus one on a roll later when you act on it. But, you're now this plane that you're in, uh, is quite large, right? And you're inside this plane, and there's like a pilot's area and a navigator's area, and there's like a gunner area. And it's like this big, and there's and it's metal, <laughs> so that you'd be protected from shrapnel. Uh, it's pretty exciting as you're in this place, and when you're in there, no one can see you because you're inside this plane. And while you're in there, you you hear some people talking. Uh, outside of the plane and you hear one saying well i don't know i heard that she was a pilot and they're like kameneva no I'm like yeah yeah i heard that she was a pilot and that she got demoted to mechanic and sent over to the 588 because well you know no i don't know she's i heard she got caught Got caught what? I heard she got caught, you know, with someone. Like, one of the male pilots? No, no, before she even got here. But I mean, she got caught with, she got caught with her flight instructor. Her flight instructor. So, like, her female flight instructor. Yes. So then what is she doing here? I don't know. Apparently she was a good enough pilot or whatever that she was able to, I don't know. She's now, she's working as a mechanic. Huh. Yeah, well, I'm glad she's not on our team. Well, but I heard she's really good as a mechanic. Well, don't tell the, don't go and tell the Politrek. If anybody finds out about that, she's probably going to a gulag. Huh. Well, we got to go and service these planes. And like they pick up, right? You can hear them like picking up heavy things and moving, and they're gonna sort of start moving to start working on these planes. And the voices recede a little bit because they're, because if you remember when you went into the plane, there's like a line of them, and they seem to be heading towards like one end of the line. So you've got a bit of space to perhaps get out of there without being seen. I think as soon as she hears the voices start dying down, she, uh, in her like terrified little mousy way, like starts like do 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 and like trying to get out of the plane. Um, uh, yeah, it's a partial success though, so I wonder if maybe she like uh, accidentally hits a crate on her way out, or uh, and and kind of like stumbles a little bit and has to kind of. And there's, like, you don't know if they notice you or if they don't and don't say anything. But they don't say anything, but that doesn't mean they didn't see you, but you don't know which one is which. Either they just let it go or you, you made it off scot-free, but you, you, can't, you can't tell. Mm-hmm. Tatiana, what are you doing? Well, I think I'm going to go ahead and take these cards and deliver them. Mm -hmm. 
<sighs> you make the long walk. And the thing is, it's a long walk. Like, to go all the way over is a long way. And you have to make your way all the way past all these planes and, and all these sort of uh, zones. And it's like hustle and it's bustle and there's a lot happening. And it's um, it's a little exciting in some ways, right, to see all the movement. And you make your way all... And it's funny because the 218th is also like in the far end of their end. So you have to pass by the 217th where you've got all these uh, fighter jets. And people don't make as many comments to you because you have got junior lieutenant bars on and people don't say much to officers. They don't want to get in trouble, right? So there's a way in which your rank covers you a little bit as you're walking through. And you make your way into... Uh, you're like, where is this place? And you hear it. You hear, aha! And you're like, oh, yeah, that, that's that's Boris. Uh, oh, good. <laughs> and you open up the door to this supply room. And this supply room is stocked full. There are extra crates that clearly he's got extra stuff. And in the middle of this supply room is Boris. And his tunic is sort of unbuttoned and he's looking very relaxed. And he's sitting around a table with three privates. You all know your ranks now. You've learned them. And these are like privates and they look young. And he's probably in his early 30s, this guy, Boris. And they're playing cards. And they've got some bottles of vodka. And it looks to you like he is winning hardcore. And they are not. And he is... Uh, from his particular posture and the way he's gesturing, he sort of looks like uh, a guy holding court, right? Like he, you can tell that these privates sort of look up to him like he's so worldly and amazing and he's just like soaking it in, right? He's like, he's eating in all of this attention. And he sees you and he goes, ah, Petrov. And then he, then he looks at you again and he goes, oh, and then he stands up and he goes, uh, ma'am? Junior Lieutenant, Comrade Junior Lieutenant Petrov. And then he kind of like buttons up his uh, thing. It is good to see you. And then like Relax. he gestures to the men and they all stand up as well. Relax, Comrade, I brought you these cards. Ah, and he looks at the private and says, as you see, Comrade Senior Sergeant Smirnov has contacts all over the base. Thank you so much for giving me these cards. And he's like directing this to the privates. But I only brought you five. This oh. one we're keeping. Oh, oh, okay. Why only five, uh, ma'am? Well, I figure you're only going to need that much practice to try and beat us, so. You uh, said you're good. Of course. I am best poker player in all of Belarus. Well, oh, maybe not all of Belarus, but... Uh, and like one of the problems is like, he's, he's really good. He beats Wonderful. us. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Uh, now, uh, ma'am, uh, comrade junior lieutenant, I just want to say that as uh, supply sergeant for 218th, if you need anything, and again, this is being told to you, but directed a little bit outwards. Uh, if you need anything, always come to speak to Boris, because I have all the connections. I have anything that anyone needs. I am best supply sergeant in all of the 4th Army Air Regiment. He looks at the privates. Well, it's, it's funny you say that. Um, I, there is actually something that I would like. Oh, oh. Uh, I have always the things, all of the things I have them, and I am a good person to know. What, ma'am, might you need? Well, I, we received our vodka rations, and uh, they were a little subpar, and since you, looking at the privates behind him, clearly know everything and everyone and are such a good person to know, I figure you can save us from the dredges of this terrible, terrible vodka. I think you're making a scrounging roll, are you not? Yeah. That is luck uh, plus well, one. Although, like, perhaps not pulling rank? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can get a, you can get a, you can get a plus two. 
plus two. I'll take that. Mm -hmm. um, so that would still be under luck? Yeah, that's still luck. Because you're not going through approved channels. Approved channels. <laughs> approved channels. <laughs> approved channels are for suckers. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's just my plus two is my modifier. Yeah. Yes. Hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. He looks at you, and he's facing away from the privates, but the privates are all looking at him, and he's very aware, right? He's very, very aware uh, of that. So uh, you, for our day moves, you're going to get what you want, but you need to take two choices. You attract unwanted attention, you take one harm from lack of sleep, you get poor quality stuff, or you incur a debt to pick two. Hmm. Let's say I'll incur a debt mm -hmm. and poor quality. I don't want harm just yet. <laughs> Spare. So he looks at you like he's got like there's this there's this clearly this interesting power dynamic happening where he's posturing for these other people and wanting to save face in particular ways. And he says of course, I have vodka. I have best vodka that you can get in the 218th, which is good quality, of course. And I can give this to you, no problem. But I need something from you in return. I'm listening. So, it so happens that one of the people in your squadron... Uh, is uh, a friend of mine is he says can we step over here for one moment of course you just sort of step out of the side of the ways and where uh the the privates can hear it. he says mm, i have friend of friend who has sort of, um, sweet feelings on someone in your unit and if maybe you could deliver for this friend of friend a message and package to this person in your unit and perhaps let this person know that this person is a good person, then maybe you could put in good word. There are too many persons involved. Just tell me what you want me to say. Uh, so, <clears throat> Sergeant Yu, you perhaps know her. She's quartermaster for your uh, regiment. I do. She is very nice, also beautiful and smart, and also mad at me very much. So much so that I cannot always make deals because she's no longer talking to me, you know? So I'm thinking I give you some vodka, and also maybe I give you a small package for her. You tell her that you make deal with me and I'm very reasonable and also nice guy. Also impressive and people like me, friends and all of that. And then maybe she now will make deals with me as well. Mm -hmm. I would be overjoyed to do this. Oh, okay. And he just seems surprised. He's like, oh, like that was easier than he thought it would be. <laughs> he says, okay. But, oh, wait, don't tell anyone. I mean, tell her, but don't tell anyone else. My lips are sealed. I would never want to out the purveyor of the best vodka. Good. One moment. So he goes back and he's just like, and then he, he brings his volume back up and he goes, yes, I'm so glad we could make a good deal because we have, so, I have so much respect amongst Officer Corps. And he goes back and the privates are just looking like, oh. They, sort of like, maybe they didn't think he was maybe 100% true about how much pull he has, but then there's this, like, officer here, so maybe it's true. So they seem like, oh, that's impressive. Also, whenever he walks away and they're giving me the googly eyes, I just shake my head no. <laughs> and they're like, and he comes back with this small crate. It's not very big. And he says, and it's got like these rations like, okay, here's a box of special rations for vodka. Mm -hmm. Extra, so it's okay. And he hands them to you and he goes, and, and he comes up with this like small little box. It's uh, wrapped in sort of plain paper. He says, 
this is other, uh, you know. I'll, I'll see that she gets it. Thank you. Business. And the guys are like, oh. and they, uh, they, they leave you on the way out. But he says, it was good making business with you. Always. Uh, comrade junior lieutenant. He, and he salutes. A pleasure as well. Turns, leaves. <laughs> uh, I assume you make it back to the barracks. And the vodka, how do I put this? Is better than yours. Mm. It is also, however, poor quality stuff. It does not seem to you as if he gave you poor stuff on purpose. It seems to you as if this is the kind of stuff that he has, that he doesn't necessarily have. Or likes. Yes, right, that he doesn't necessarily have better vodka. But you come into this, uh, you come into uh, your barracks, your small sort of homey barracks, with this crate and a small, a small little box. Ladies, I have a gift from the two Oh, eight. before you do, on your way back, however, you see Lena out near the 587th. I think she's it's, just sort of like, scree, 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 like along the sides of the buildings, trying to like not get noticed. She looks fairly guilty, <laughs> um, but like she looks like she's trying to be very like, Stoic about it. It's an awkward look. It's just decidedly awkward. Lena? Uh, uh, Lena. Uh, hi. I mean, um, hello. I mean, um, are you? Good afternoon. Are you hiding? Not any more. Uh, come help me carry this box. Okay. <laughs> she like comes over and I see you like. like there we go. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> she just like, what were you doing over there? Uh, I just, I just wanted to, I just, I wanted to see what the inside of the bombers looked like. Don't tell anyone. Well, I won't if you tell me what they look like. You would not believe the ability that they have to navigate. It's insane. The things that they could do, I mean, they could, the, the technology within them, well, they have the capacity to be able to practically get you exactly where you want without having to rely on the stars at all. I mean, give or take, I think, if I understood them correctly, that is. They even had cameras so you could take photographs of, of actually hitting the targets. I don't even <laughs> know what these things were, but they, it, it looked like potentially the capacity to, 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 to get a good look at what you're bombing. As you're saying this, uh, Titania is walking faster and faster, perhaps stepping a little harder. <laughs> Lena's, because she's, she's very s small and like petite, so she's like <laughs> trying to like keep up as like to go faster. Her like little feet just like keep going faster. Um, and she stops looking so guilty as she gets like more excited about telling you what it is she saw. Uh, and then, and then she goes, and did you know that um, Kremna is a really good pilot? Interesting. Kremna. Why do they have her as a mechanic then? Lena. Yes? Tatania stops. <laughs> <laughs> like, she, I assume they like carrying back to back, so she definitely runs into the back of her. Lena, it seems like you know something. Uh, I think there was something in um, flight school that happened and it didn't work out. But I thought that you should know that she's a good pilot, too. Are you saying something didn't work out with? her in flight school? Wouldn't that I, make her not a good pilot? Some Sometimes things go wrong and I think that might have happened. 
Tatani starts walking again. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Well, so at this point, uh, once we get back to the bunker, Tatania throws maybe a harsh word, but aggressively sets down the box of Vanya. Uh, And uh, Nick, you see them come in with a small crate, clearly marked rations of vodka. Um, well, a little bit of good news is we have more of this. Uh, more of the same or more of something better? Well, I was told it was something better, but take that with a very large grain of salt. Might take a large grain of salt to get it down. Or some chocolates. Lena, Oh, where are the chocolates? I do the locker, pull out the chocolate. The whole time she's like, and Anastasia is on her bunk and she's reading like uh, a magazine, like a pictorial magazine that's got like like pictures of like very sort of Soviet propaganda, like dashing flyers sort of uh, magazine. And uh, Sarah's up on her bunk and she's just reading her poetry, trying to ignore all of y'all. Uh, and and Paulia, she's sleeping. She <laughs> she's got like she's got um, like a little bit of a blanket over her face and she's just trying to trying to sleep. Well, who wants to try some of this? And Polly goes. <laughs> <laughs> she's 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 often asleep, but she's awake for vodka. <laughs> Polly, Anastasia, Sarah, come down. Let's all do this together. And you all come down and get these little little cups, right? These tin cups uh, for your vodka. Well, I propose that we host we're here we made it ladies and even though the odds may not be in our favor we are doing what the men cannot and we are doing it to protect our country and our people and that is something i think we should be proud of and sarah goes here here and polly goes hell yeah and she just (laughs) downs hers immediately and then starts choking a little bit (laughs) anastasia goes Yes. Oh. Mm. Oh. Oh no, this is not. This is not good. This is the best vodka I've had. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and and Anastasia looks at you, Nick, and goes, I'm going to get really good vodka from my sister. If you could do that, you will, in fact, be one of my best friends. Really? We'll cross that bridge. Okay. And then your senior lieutenant training officer comes in and says, I hope you're ready. You have your first training mission to do today. Now, as you all know, that in order to qualify graduate for flight training, you must both qualify in navigation and in piloting. But your section leader, Comrade Junior Lieutenant Tatiana Petrov, will be making all assignments and deciding who goes in which plane and in which position. I have a briefing for you. Let me hand it to you. And she hands you a small sort of like a a pad of paper. And you are to get your section ready and then come to the flight line. Do not disappoint me, Junior Lieutenant. Never. And she gives you all this sort of steely look. And the thing about her is that she's always like perpetually sort of mad and mean, except that it's never in her eyes. Do you know what I mean? Like she's, she's got this sort of like harsh, mean face, but her eyes have always got this little bit of a twinkle, except when she's looking at Anastasia, then actually it's just mean. Um, but <laughs> for the most of you, she, she like, she's got this little twinkle of like, okay, all right, you're, you're doing okay. And then she looks, before she leaves, she says, I will be looking at all of your skills on this mission. It'll help me determine who stays and who goes. And she just heard her like, she looks over. Make me proud, don't die. And she walks out. (laughs) Yes, comrade. So for your first day mission, 
you have an auxiliary sort of uh, airfield where you go, you practice what it's like to be on the space, and it's a small airfield. Uh, and it's this one that has all these sort of little hills and mountains at the back that you have to worry about. And it's cold, it's rainy, it's, it's February 1942, and you have to qualify, so that's like hanging over your, sh over your shoulders. And you know that the final exam at the very end is going to be an actual live mission against actual German targets, so that's looming ahead of you. Now, the area around this is, you've got, it's dominated by the Volga River, which is the prominent aid for navigation. And then beyond the valley of the Volga, you've got these rolling hills and steppes and empty fields that are awaiting cultivation in the spring. And you're in a space with sort of densely, densely forested area. And this is the wettest season right now. Uh, and it's just sort of miserable and cold and you're in open cockpit. So like you're just, all the elements are right in your face. Um, and your first mission, Junior Lieutenant, why don't you lay it out for us? All right. Our first mission is going to be, all right. Um, we are going to, ladies, brace yourselves. Under Mariana Raskova herself, we are going on a night flying exercise. Or do we have to do the A first? A first, yeah. First? Okay. I lied. That's, <laughs> you don't even know that yet. Um, <laughs> so what we're going to be doing is performing a mock bombing on a target range. We will enjoy an aggressive fighter bomber escort from the 217th Assault Aviation Regiment under control of Captain D.P. Golunov. So, what does everyone want in terms of what you feel most confident in? And I'll take that into consideration. Navigation. Um, I, I feel uh, uh, nav navigation. And then Anastasia goes, I'm a really good pilot. And pilots are dashing, and they're the ones that make movies about. Sarah. Sarah goes, I'm a, I'm a very good navigator. And Polya? Oh, Polya takes the, the, she's got this handkerchief over her face. She lifts it up. Pilot. <sighs> Wonderful. All right. Now remind me, where is the sheet for that? Let me take you to it. Let us see our lovely, wonderful sheet. And no sheets. And as a matter of fact, what I did was I made everybody's name for you so you can just drag and drop them, I hope. Hey, wonderful. There you go. All right. Let's see. Zoom on this. So in this game, we have, we have each section comprises three planes and one reserve aircraft. And there are six airwomen, and there will be a pilot and a navigator in each, in each plane. Uh, so you all as a group have to decide what tail numbers you want to give your planes and who will be going where. See, I cannot actually select any of these. Oh, that makes me so sad. I'm, I think you probably have to do it yourself to do baffled. it. Baffled. <laughs> no, that's fine. All right. Um, do we, are we going to decide together what the tail numbers are or does it? Yeah. You guys get to choose. Ladies, what tail number for number one? Somewhere between a one and two hundred. Forty-two. Ooh, nice. the meaning of life. <laughs> uh, one hundred five. One hundred five, and then the third one will be eighty-four. Mm -hmm. And I'll even be able to move that in a second. There we are. All right. So. Ugh. Um. Lena, I am going to have you pilot number 42 first. Since you are more familiar with these planes than perhaps others among us. And Anastasia is not actually really paying attention to anything you're saying. Her heads are in the clouds and she's just sort of like, you know. Hmm. Lena. Meanwhile, um, all right. And you will have Sarah as your navigator. Sarah's comrade junior lieutenant, it'll be my pleasure. 
All right, and then Polina, I will have you piloting number 84. Yep. <clears throat> she starts and getting herself together. Your navigator, because I know that you are a fine and very competent and accomplished pilot, your navigator is going to be Anastasia. Oh, but I was going to be, I, I'm pilot, did you say? It would be a shame to waste your numerous talents on piloting so early. Oh, oh okay. I'll be navigating. Hi. Meanwhile, I will be piloting the 105. And Nick, I will have you as my navigator. Excellent. So who is the lead navigator, who's the lead and pilot, and who's on Beto Maya or Wing Woman? All right, we will have, I will be the lead pilot. Um, actually, let me have, I'm gonna have, actually, as much as I hate to do this, Nick, I'm gonna have you navigate with Paulina and I, <laughs> I will take on Anastasia as my navigator. Anastasia's like, ooh, I get, we're already best friends. Oh yes, it's wonderful. Um, Nick, I'm gonna have you as the lead navigator for this wonderful- Understood. Adventure. And Polia looks at you and goes, Nick? And she just gives you the nod that said, like, like your, your fellow air woman nod. Mm-hmm. Return said nod. All right, and then uh, for this first one, Lena, I'm going to have you as the wing woman. <laughs> I believe in your abilities. Thank you, ma'am. And so you make it out to the flight line, and it's a beautiful, crisp, cold day. And this is just a practice bombing. You just have to go out there, drop the bombs on these sort of uh, hay bales that are made to look like trucks, and then come back. And that is all you have to do. And so we do our night moves, although this is a day mission. You're in your planes, and as you're sitting in your planes, um, waiting for things to happen, you see this woman. Uh, this is this is Kameneva, Mel Kameneva, who is your your section's mechanic. She's in charge of all of your planes, and she's there with a number of privates. You can tell by her rank that she's a sergeant. And she has got very short cropped hair. It's sort of brown and a little bit curly. Uh, and she's got really broad shoulders and she's sort of well built. And she's sort of this like a, a, a handsome woman. And she's got like um, uh, her, she's, she's wearing her um, mechanics overalls, but they look good on her. And she's just like, she's ordering the privates about. And these privates, and a lot of them are, are sort of these, they, they, it's not, not all these women are very huge women. And they have to carry these 50 kilogram bombs and attach them by hand to your plane. And they're, and like the, and because it takes a little bit of manual dexterity to do this, they can't wear their gloves. So they're, they're carrying these really cold bombs that if you drop them, they explode and attach them to your planes. And she is sort of watching everything and making sure everything is fine. And before you go off, she comes up to each one of you, uh, the pilots for each one, and she hands you a clipboard with the pre-flight check. And she's like, comrade, is, is this all right? Yes. And she says, This looks wonderful. The planes are a little, a little touchy. Just be careful with the throttle, but you'll be wonderful. Thank you, comrade. And then she sort of backs off and off you go. You take off and it's a beautiful day, although cold. And I need the navigator, the lead navigator to make the navigation roll, the Great. wayfinding roll. And wayfinding Back. is a skill roll. Now, you don't have to make it because you can find your way there easily, but if you don't make the roll, you're not qualifying. Right. Gonna make the roll. Uh, let's see. I think I have, I have a modifier. I think I'm at zero on that. Mm -hmm. So. Ooh. Ah, wait. No, that's not going right. to help you. You have one mission pool, but that will bring you up to a six, which is still a fail. Ooh, yikes. So, well, somebody had to have a bad roll for this game. I had to just kick it off. 
Let's get it out of the way soon. So you have some hard choices to make. Okay. You can either scrub the mission and return in shame, or you can strike the target late and alone, making your own attack run. But who's your who's your uh, who's your pilot? Yo. Polina is your pilot. Yes. Oh, the yeah, her oh, her yeah. pilot specifically. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and your pilot is yeah. So you're gonna you're gonna have to scrub it. You you cannot get there. Tell me tell me how you misleading the how you misleading the group to the to the target uh i was looking at the controls and got flustered and uh read the dial wrong on the inside of the uh thing i can't think of the right word for it but like the the control panel yeah, yeah i was i was looking at the wrong dial mm -hmm. Um, so you look at the wrong dial and then all of a sudden you're not where you think you are, right? You're looking for where this, where the, where the target would be and it is not there. And you're like, I can't find it. And you don't, you can't, you've turned yourself around. You don't even know where your base is anymore. And you have to go home is a complete failure. Now, our Great. other two, our other two air women, Lena... You are technically in the pilot's chair, but you could make a wayfinding role if you wanted to take over that. It would be a bit bold and overstepping your position. It's Lena, though. She likes adventure. This is what she lives for. She wants to fly. She wants to prove that she has the ability to really protect Russia and, and um be everything she can be. So I, I think she would. So the section's going and you see Nick's plane veer off course. This is 42 uh, that she's on. And, oh, I'm sorry, she's in 84. And you have no radios in your planes because these are old, outdated planes and you cannot signal to her and she doesn't see it and she's off. And you know that if you follow her, you're not going to make it where you need to go. So Lena is going to talk into the little rubber tube um, back to Sarah and say, she's going the wrong way. I think we need to stay the course. I'm going to do it. Make your roll. Make your roll. Uh, That's that, skill, right? That is skill. And you get plus one because of your eyeballing earlier. <laughs> Oh, come on, let me roll my skill roll. Roll the skill. Ah, it's not popping up. Where are you? There we go. All right. No! Was that with a plus one? No. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. oh man, things are going rough already. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. So Sarah says to you, all right, you have, you have your choice, right? Um, you <laughs> you have a choice. You can, because this is like not great for you, you can either scrub the mission and return home in shame, or you can push through and make this attack late and alone. Making the attack run on your own. Um, and this is a training attack? It is. So do we... I know how lethal this system is. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So what I'm trying to understand is, you know what? No. I think that here's here's what I think she would do. I think that she would still try and do it. I don't think she would turn back. Okay. Okay. She's a hawk, man. No, She's no. It, this is fair. <laughs> terrified, terrified hawk. Okay. So that's what you're going to do. Now, Tatiana, you don't need a, a successful navigation role to get there. Because it's daytime and you can make it. You see one of your planes just flying off, like, the wrong way. Then you see your <laughs> other plane sort of make a wrong turn and then just start moving in. Uh, it's, it's, <laughs> the planes are like, you're like, what is happening to my section? But you can make that attack roll. Because you're like, um, I'm just going to, I'm not going to, like, you decide that you're not going to do anything fancy. You're not going to try to navigate by, like, by by checking the 
like you're just following the directions. You know what I mean? Like they were trying They're to right actually there, people. <laughs> just <laughs> there. Um, I need you to make your attack run. All right, that's guts. Yes, that is guts. Let's see what happens. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh! Wow! All Somehow. the bad Somehow. rolls. God. Can we? So, how do we? Uh, how do we purge electronic dice? Do you I changed like... the color. I believe that's okay. what people like to say. I think this is a terrible color. This is a terrible, terrible color. Color of <laughs> fail. Uh, hmm. So. This is what I need you all to do. Actually, before we find out what happens with that, Lena, I need you to make your attack run. Okay. We'll just see how bad this gets. <laughs> Could I get a plus one for my investigation earlier? Already used it, and that was for navigation. <laughs> all right, here we go. Oh. Oh, okay. So let's talk about oh, these <laughs> terrible failures. You two have mm -hmm. some choices to make. We will start with Tatiana. Yes. So you have to, you have a choice. Yeah. Abort this attack completely, which will trigger an informal review. Mm. Or tempt fate and press on, which you know is going to be rough for you. And Lena, you have the same choice. Man, that would require another roll, would it not? It would. Oh, I just don't know if I trust all this. <laughs> I know, I'm, uh, okay, so. Uh, so you can I abort roll, the mission. Yeah. Or you can press forward. Mm. If all, if I press forward mm -hmm. and things go even worse mm -hmm. than they're going now, I get a harm, yes? Oh, well, uh, all sorts of things could happen, including harm, but also damaging your plane. A plane could crash completely, get marked. Let's push on. <laughs> oh. It can't get worse than one. This is fair. Lena, what about you? Yeah, I'm pushing on too. Let's do this. I need all you right. all to roll guts to tempt fate. I'm scared. Hey! Oh. Okay. Okay. So, let's, let's start Oh, actually, the good news. <laughs> there is good news. Because you, Tatiana, if I remember yes. correctly, you are a leader, correct? I am. Which means that anybody who follows you in an attack run, which would be Lena, gets a uh? plus one. Which brings you to a six, which is a fail. However, mission pool. You have one mission pool, which will bring you to a seven, oh. which is a partial success. Do yes. it. Yes. Do it. Okay. Let's partially succeed on this. Okay. <laughs> yeah, let's let's take it by the tail or whatever. You still know, the metaphor got away from me. Both let's need to take folks. two <laughs> negative consequences. We will start with Tatiana since your bombs hit first. Yeah. Pick two negative consequences. The damage to the target is in is not significant and it's your fault. A plane in your section is damaged. You and your fellow airwoman are marked. Or um, you're going to basically fly in too low, drop the bombs too low, which is going to trigger basically fire, flak fire on you. Okay. Um, one that we're going to take, that I'm going to take, is going to be that the bomb didn't do a ton of damage. Yep. Uh, that's, that's on me. That's my bad. Mm -hmm. Um and the other is going to be that. And I'm going to note, you're in a plane with an NPC, and NPCs only get one mark. So for all of you watching at home, uh, in this game system, there are two different hit point uh, ratings. There's harm, 
and if they take four, they die, but they can heal from harm. And then there are marks, and there are 12 marks total, and marks represent the way that war um, brings you down and damages you and harms you long-term psychologically. And uh, if you get 12 marks, you die. If you're an NPC, if you get one mark, you're going to die, when I think is dramatically appropriate. Oh, shoot. And you have Anastasia Anastasia in your plane, don't you? I do. That yes, was you do. I was going to be like, oh, no. <laughs> So sad. No, no, we have to keep her safe though, or else we're all gonna get chewed out. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, to be fair, I'm fairly certain we can't avoid that on this mission anyway. Yeah. You can get a I damaged mean, plane. If, plus, if she dies on a training mission, whose fault is that really? <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, I'm going to, I'll take a damage. Right? Well, let me, what does the fire flak do? Is that? Uh, well, then you have to make a, can do a damage or? Then your navigator is going to have to take a roll to try to avoid getting a bunch of damage and it's dangerous. She's not really going to be able to roll. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'll take a damage. That's probably less damage. Yeah. Than more damage. Okay. I'll take a damage and weep silently to myself. <laughs> Um, before we talk about how this plays out, what about you, Lena? Uh, sorry, I got super like distracted with the Anastasia bit, so I can I can hurt the plane. Hurt the plane. The damage arm. to the target is not significant. It's your fault. Yeah. Both you and your airwoman are marked, uh, which is an NPC, so that they would be saying sad things for Sarah, uh, death for her, and or um, you strike too low, which causes uh, flak to basically, your bombs are gonna, shrapnel from your bombs are gonna hit your plane. Um, and that just means time to repair the plane. Oh, well, if, if shrapnel hits your plane, uh, really bad things can happen. Like five harm, your plane crashes. Yeah, but I've got wheels down. So I would say maybe just take the damage on the plane. Yeah. Okay, I think I'm going to take the damage on the plane and mm -hmm. the cuz I need to take two, right? Yeah. And the um the my bombs didn't really do a whole lot. I dropped half of them in the water. Okay, let's talk about how this happens. <laughs> So your section, this is your first flight, everyone. Like you've been training for this for like weeks now and you've been practicing and it's so exciting and you go up as this group and nerves hit, right? It, it all falls apart. Nick's plane goes off the wrong direction and you think you're following the right road but it's not the right road and all of a sudden you're there but you're not there anymore. And then Lena's like, no, no, that's the wrong way. So she goes this other way, but that's not it. But she comes back around. She swoops and curves back around in. And Tatiana, you're just coming straight in for this. And as you both are arriving towards uh, your target, you realize you're heading towards each other and the target. And so you have to bank sharply in order to not hit each other midair and die in a huge explosion. Uh, and your bombs drop, but they don't even hit the target because they're wrong the wrong space as you're trying to get in there. And you clip each other's wings in air, and there's this sickening, crunching sound. And you do everything you can to pull yourself back, to sort of move the plane back into some kind of, uh, back towards where your, where your landing strip is. And... You know, Nick, for you, this is fine. Uh, Paulina is your pilot. She's able to bring you back in and down. You land first. You were sort of out of the way because you didn't circle back around. You just came right back in. You land. And then you two, in your planes, you have damaged planes. And you, you can barely keep the throttle together as the plane is shaking to pieces. You need to roll some wheels down for me to land these planes. Uh, and that is a, where's my wheels down? It's skill. So I have adventurer, which means I can bring a plane wheels down well. I'm trying to remember if that means I need to roll or if it. You do, but you take one fewer consequences. Okay, cool. Skill, you uh, think? Skill. 
Well, here goes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, okay. Lena. That's how, that's how Elena does. You just like, mm -hmm. tell me about it. Tell me about landing this plane. Uh, I think as she's like coming in, she's she like has this moment right as she can see the landing strip, and everything so far has just gone to shit. Like it's it. She is feeling pretty shaken, but when she sees the landing strip, there's something in her brain that just like snaps, and she's like, you know what? Everything else that happened doesn't matter right now. I just need to land and I know how to do this. And she like, as she's like grabbing the yoke, she can feel the, um, she can feel the plane bumping and then she just catches the right air current. And it's just like a beautiful, like you barely even notice the bump as they like land and, and come to a stop. Now, Tatiana, mm -hmm. I want to talk about your landing. Yes. <laughs> you were trying to land this plane, and it is very difficult because your wing, your upper wing is sort of broken. And so the, the, the ability to actually sort of keep level is very, diff very difficult, and you need all of your concentration to be able to bring this thing down in a way that will not, uh, you know, cause explosions. And as you're trying to concentrate, Behind you, in the navigator seat, you hear Anastasia freaking out. <laughs> she starts crying, and she's like, I don't want to die. Oh my God, we're going to die. We're going to die. I, uh, uh, uh. And she starts freaking out, and this is breaking your concentration. You need that concentration to be able to land, and she is not helping. And then you can feel her grab the stick. She's a navigator, she should not be grabbing the stick, but you can feel her trying to land this thing and it is throwing you off. And the plane, you're trying to correct, you're trying to correct, and she's trying to correct, but she doesn't know what she's doing and she's also freaking out. And your plane dips too fast and it just starts careening. And I need you to tempt fate. And that is guts. All right. Uh. Okay. Okay. So let's talk about this. What happens to you? You think you have it. You think you can do it, but she wrecks it. Her freaking out causes the plane to buckle at the last minute and you crash. This plane crashes right into those hills at the end of the runway that you have to worry about. And as you crash into this plane, into these, these hills at the bottom, you find yourself pinned, right? The plane flips and you're pinned. Um, I need you to do a couple of things for me. I need you to split three harm between you and Anastasia. How would you like, how would you like that harm to be split up? I will take one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> and I think she deserves two. Okay. This nonsense. That is fair. Also, your plane is on fire. Of course it is. It has caught fire and it is going up fast. And you are you are stuck in your plane. She's stuck in the plane. She's injured. You can get out because of that partial success. But to do so, you're going to have to, you have a choice. You either pull her out with you, which is going to give you another harm, or you leave her and let her try to get out by herself. Mm. Mm. Pull her out. You're gonna pull her out? I'll do it. Okay. Tell me about it. You're both pinned, the plane is upside down, it is on fire, and at this moment, you can kind of see through the flames, everybody is looking, right? Because the plane has crashed, so the entire, like, everybody is there. Right? Everybody is looking to see what happened, to see what's going on. Everybody's sort of freaking out and worried. So everyone is about to witness what is going on right now. What happens? So I managed to 
wiggle around and, and dislodge myself from the plane. And I start kind of, I get up a little bit, I'm kind of limping away. And then I hear her unmistakable, just jarring, just shrieky yes. little voice, yeah. just yelling behind me, screaming, Banshee-esque. Mm -hmm. and, um, so I turn around and I lean down and I, you know, I, I'm, my legs a little messed up, but I, I pull on her mm -hmm. um, and her, her uniform is a little bit caught on uh, the jagged edge of the plane, but I managed to kind of yank it free. Mm -hmm. um, and then I, I pull her out and I kind of pull her over back from um, the, at least a safe ish distance from the flames. Cause people are starting to run over now that mm -hmm. um, they see what's going on. Mm -hmm. So I pull her out and then, you know, I kind of let her be and then I kind of fall over um, and I'm laying on the ground nearby um, as people are starting to approach. And then I proceed to tell her that we're not friends anymore. <laughs> <laughs> You don't know if she registers it because she's wailing so hard. And in the midst of like hearing, hearing like the sound of fire, you can hear Senior Lieutenant Masha Rudina yelling. I said, nobody dies. Nobody dies. Get the medics. Get the medics. And medics, these, these uh, women rush out and they're pulling both of you out towards, uh, you know, towards the medical tent. And you can see Anastasia's sister, the deputy Politruck, the secret police, looking angry. And she says, I want them for an interview in my office as soon as they can. And the rest of you two, so you, so Anastasia and Tatiana are pulled off to the medical tent, knowing that there's a an interview with the secret police looming. And Lena and Tatiana, you're told to go to your barracks and get ready for a debriefing to sort of get your stuff ready. As Mel is sort of pulling your planes, not the one on fire, they're trying to put that out, back into the hangar to repair. And as you arrive in your barracks, as you open the door, you see, in the middle of the barracks, tied to the support beam, in a t-shirt and his boxer shorts. Oh no. And gagged, Alexi Beam just like, trussed up like a present, looking somewhat panicked. Lena immediately pulls the kitchen knife out of her boot and like just walks over and like starts cutting him down. Um, and her eyes are just wide this entire time and she doesn't say anything. She's just like. And at that moment, you hear Anastasia's sister's voice say, I'm coming in for an inspection. And that's where we're going to close it for today. <laughs> uh, <laughs> mm. uh, oh, oh, the first mission's always the hardest. You'll work through it. it I don't, can literally only go up from here. You can only go up from here. I, I don't know how you'll have to deal with a, a naked dude in your barracks with the secret police coming to visit. And I don't know how you're going to deal with... Um, that complete failure of a mission as the section yeah. leader, it'll be great. It'll only be full of joy and happiness uh, next week. <laughs> Wait, so, so how do we change the color of the dice? Um, on your name, <laughs> there's like a little uh, color by your name and you can change it that way. So oh, yeah. everyone, I want to thank everyone for being here. Uh, this has been amazing. We have some donations that I want to read out and then we're going to give our signs off. Uh, so we had, let's see, an anonymous gift of $50 from Anonymous. 
So we have a tradition here at the Geek Space. When somebody, somebody donates anonymously without leaving a message, one of us will make up the message for this donation. And I think, Nick, it is you. You must give us the message for this donation. Uh, any message? Any message. Uh, Nick was right. Anastasia was going to be a lot of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. Um, <laughs> William T.W. Uh, gives us a donation of $5 and says, Love this first half. Awesome characters. All different. Awesome NPCs, too. Uh, Tom Prince has a donation of $100 and no message. As oh our other new member to the geek space, Fox, this is your moment to give uh, a message for this one. Here are a hundred reasons to change that RNG color. <laughs> yes. uh, and Noxwar gives a donation of $20 and says, Premiere, but I'm late. Hope you all had a flying blast. Can't wait for the VODs, but I have not donated for a while, so I will force you to take my money. Thank you for the money, <laughs> Noxwar. Oh, Vera Pavlova fan has uh, shown up again for $5 and says, Dancing with the moon in the ballroom of the night. Their ability overcomes insolent speech from belittled boy men. They win our love with ferocious fury. They win our loyalty with practice prowess. Go fly, bomb Nazis. And Colonel RPG for 1542 says, you all are so awesome. Thank you for the awesome characters. Looking forward to the new series. And I think those are our donations. Thank you so much. It has yes. been amazing being here with you all. I would like each one of you to tell us who you are, how we can find you, and how you're feeling. <laughs> well, I just came out of a plane on fire, so I have that going for me. <laughs> um, I'm feeling like things can only go up from here. <laughs> um, and yes, again, anyone can find me. Um, my channel is Rocket Fox. I'm everywhere. Rocket Fox, that's me. Okay. Uh, I am Mac Beauvais. You can find me pretty much everywhere as at Strange Like That. Uh, you can also find me over on the Happy Jacks RPG uh, Twitch channel as well. I am in a D and D game and also a Star Trek game, so I'm oh. over there every Monday night. And uh, Nick is uh, is feeling both terrified and validated right now. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Hi, I'm Shell Game. You can find me on Worlds Beyond on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And if you're in the Seattle area, come check me out at the, that was weird phrasing, but anyway, um, Thursdays <laughs> I do improv shows at Pike Place Market. I don't think I ever introduced myself randomly. Hi everybody, I am Trooper SJP and I am your GM and I stream on my own channel on Thursdays and Saturdays and it has been my great and deepest honor to be able to GM for this wonderful cast and we have even more to come next week, uh, next Saturday, same bat time, same bat channel with another cast member to fill in our ranks uh, which will help on those uh, not dying roles at the end. And also next week, a bunch of consequences for the shenanigans at the end of today, which I'm looking forward to. <laughs> <laughs> but what I want to say is thank everyone for coming in, for showing up. It's been wonderful. Thank you for all the donations. Thank you for being here. Thank you for all of the chats. Next Wednesday, we have Worlds Beyond, which is a cipher system game run by Random Tuesday, also with Shell Game over here, I think I'm pointing the wrong direction that way, Shell Game over here uh, as uh, the Anon Nisi, a cypher who's a paradox, and it's a great show. You should all go watch it uh, 10 p.m. Pacific time on Wednesdays. So, with, 
thank you, everyone. You all have been amazing. And uh, Anna, anything else? Uh, 7 p.m. Pacific time is when Worlds Beyond is. That's true. I, I meant 10 p.m. Eastern time, which is where I live. I always yeah. watch it at 10 o'clock at night. I mean 7 p.m. Pacific, 10 p.m. Eastern. <laughs> For what it's worth, that's uh, 9 p.m. Central. 9 p.m. Central. And like uh, 4 in the morning, Central European time. Uh, <laughs> was quick math or memory? No, quick math. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Take care, be kind to each other, and fly well. <laughs>